Alrighty guys, testing, testing, one, two, three, let's go ahead and make sure everything is working. I think we're good. And we're just going to go ahead and begin with part two of our seven days to die, let's make a modlet series. So let's go ahead and uh, just wait a little bit so it comes up on the screen as well, just so I can make sure that everything is working as intended. Because you know, live stream can be temperamental sometimes, so we just want to definitely make sure that this is all good. But let's go ahead and see who is in chat while that's lined up. So we have uh, KB, says, hey Max and everyone, how you doing KB? Thank you so much for popping in, dude, welcome to the stream. Um, okay, yeah, it's loaded on the screen, excellent. We have Fancy says, ooh, again, yes, again. We have Jim J, welcome to the stream. Uh, KB says, yep, again. We have Hassan, welcome to the stream, dude. Uh, he says, hello everyone, hi Max, and Yolay Wright says, uh, please don't forget to thumbs up. Thank you, Yolay Wright, welcome to the stream as well. Hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your day. So, this is part two of the modding series. Now, in the first part of the modding series, we created a few things. We created a workstation removal tool, we created a workstation removal kit, and this is going to allow us to pick up workstations in the world. We also went into the blocks file, and we added the workbench container that's going to give us the box, and we added a property to the workbench which allows us to pick up the uh, which allows us to pick up the workbench as an upgrade so essentially now what you can do is you can select the tool and with the workbench removal kit in your inventory you can right click on it it will turn the workbench into a box and then you can pick it up so any workstation you find in the world you can now go ahead and pick up matter wolfie is also in how are you doing matter wolfie Aha! so we now have uh, we now have a lot of people in thank you guys so much for coming back so now there is uh, one little problem that we currently have to face and I want to I want to see if you guys know what that is. So the problem is we've we've added these items, we've added these blocks, but there is one little problem that we have to uh, we have to address. Can anyone guess what the problem is? I want I wonder if you guys can guess what the problem is. We've got uh, th there's a hint um, there's a hint up here. There, there, there's a hint uh, if you can if you can see the text. Here's a hint, and here's another potential hint. What 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 do you re what do you reckon we we are missing? We're missing one thing. Well, actually, it could be one or maybe two, a combination of two or three things. If you haven't guessed it yet, I will tell you exactly what it is. The things we are missing now is we've got these blocks and items. So we've got the resource workstation removal kit and we've got the workstation removal tool. But there is a problem. As uh, so Max was listening earlier, he explained really well. Give me a deck or so and maybe I'll make a mod. But obviously be for backpack and box storage sorting. <laughs> nice, you're late, right? Uh, that's, that'd be awesome, though. I would talk to... Um, there was, there was someone who did make some uh, storage buttons for the bag. I think I think it was Kane that did that actually. He he did like some storage stuff. But yeah, some backpack mods. Um, that would be pretty cool. Um, what other things would you do with the backpack? Because there's I'm sure there's a lot of cool stuff you could do. But yeah, the one thing we're missing, if you guys haven't guessed it yet, is recipes. We haven't added any way for us to be able to craft these items. So that's a little bit of a problem. So we're going to need to go ahead and add a recipe. Now, in order to add a recipe, it's really easy. Uh, recipes is actually one of the easiest things you can do in the game. So if you guys want to get the mod template that I've got, which is completely blank and just has a few files in it, um, you can go ahead and click the link in the description. That will take you to a GitHub repo and it will automatically download the mods. Then create a mods folder in your 7 days to die directory and just place it in here. So you um, make a modeler, it should be called just copy it into here you need to unzip it and then paste it right there and then you'll have a blank folder structure with these files and then you'll have two folders here with the images now you'll have some dummy images i've obviously gone ahead and created some um but you guys will have some dummy images here and then you can fill in the mod info if you want to know how to do all that go check part one of the tutorial and it will guide you through all of that um let's see um so Let's see, so, and KB says the crafting of it. Yes, KB, you are correct. And Samu Studio, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Our fan says, I actually want to start my mod again. I uh, lost interest, but now it seems to be back. Ha ha! Uh, Matter Wolfie is yawning. <laughs> Matter Wolfie must be tired. Or maybe I'm just boring. It's probably that one. So, what we're going to do now is we need to see how to add a recipe. Now, the best thing when you're working out how to make mods and stuff is to see how the base code looks and then pretty much just copy it and adapt it to what you need. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go into not items. We've uh, already got that file open. We're going to open the main config folder and we're going to look for the recipes file now. So, let's go ahead and find that. Here we go. So, here is the recipes folder so let's go ahead and have a look at a recipe to see how it works okay so let's let's pick a simple recipe uh let's go down to i don't know why don't we try let's, let's try one without any effect groups and things okay this one the candle so this is the recipe for the candle okay so you have you start with an opening recipe tag and you specify the name of the item or block that you want to craft so in this case it's a candle then you can specify how many of those things you want to craft so when you make this recipe, it will give you one candle. 
And then inside these tags, inside the opening and closing tags, you then have the ingredients that make up the recipe. So for example, the candle, it's saying that you need you need yucca fibers or plant fibers, and you need one of those, and then you need animal fat, and you need one of those. Put those two together, you make a recipe for a candle which is pretty awesome. So there's plenty of recipes. You'll notice that some of them also have these things as well. You'll notice some have also a craft area. This tells you where the recipe is crafted. So if you don't want it in your backpack, but you want it on like the workbench or the campfire, you specify your craft area right here. And there are also these things called tags. We'll get into tags um, in a little bit because that'll be very important later when we want to tie things into skills and perks. But for now, why don't we go ahead and create a basic recipe for our candle table, uh, not our candle table, our uh, workbench removal kit. Let's see. And it says, uh, love you, fancy D says, um, let's see, fancy says, uh, do it, Wolfie. That actually made me yawn. <laughs> I saw she says, thanks, bro. <laughs> uh, let's see. I was like, bro? <laughs> uh, fancy, uh, let me see, let me see. Um, and it says, Doubt will feed that actually made me on. <laughs> so, it says, Wow, I haven't heard that word in forever. <laughs> uh, let me see, let me see. Keep, keep on, chat. And Loaf Dog comes in with a fart. How you doing? Just testing your response for science. That's fine. Farting is awesome. Unforgiven says, uh, You laugh, I laugh, you cry, I cry. Steal my coffee, I kill you. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and copy a basic recipe and then we'll adapt it for what we need. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just copy the recipe for candle. Now, let's go into our modded recipes file. So we're going to go into, let's go into our folder structure. We're going to go back out to the main the main area, go to mods. Then we're going to go to the make a modlet and we're going to config. And you should see there's already, if you downloaded the, the tutorial package, you should see there's already a blank recipes file in here for you to use. So just like we did with items and blocks, we want to add some recipes to the end of the file. So again, we're going to do, this we're going to do an append x path so this time we want to do it to recipes because in the recipes folder if we have a look at this one in the recipes xml file the opening tag for this one is just recipes right so it opens recipes and that's where we want to add our recipe to the end so we want to add it before the closing tag of recipes to the end of this so we're going to go ahead and do another append x path and again it's really simple we're going to do this so we're going to go down here we're going to go i said it here so we're going to first of all make a comment and we're going to say add recipes for the uh, workstation removal tool and removal kit there we go. So we just commented this just to tell us exactly what this file is doing. Because trust me, comments are really useful, especially when your mod starts getting bigger. That says, Diet Dr. Pepper is my drink of choice. Must be a wolf thing. <laughs> Maybe. I like Dr. Pepper too. Uh, wait, what's up with chat? First blood soup and now farting. So not a good combo. <laughs> oh, I guess. Uh, you are kidnapped at 18 30, 7 in the evening. So you should probably have a. So you should probably have a day with you? Uh, I, I'm not making sense of that one. Um, let's see. So, Men always in the happy dance. Pine says, I don't like A18. It's broken my chickens. Uh, I'm sure there's a way to get them fixed. Don't worry. Okay. So, let's go ahead then and add a new recipe. So, first of all, we need to do the append xpath. So, we're going to open a bracket like this and go append. I'm going to type xpath and then equals. And then we can open some quotes here. And then inside the quotes, this time we're going to do forward slash, which is going to reference the root of the XML document. And of course, the opening tag for that is recipes. So, we're just going to type recipes. And then, of course, we want to close our tag. So we're going to go open bracket forward slash append, and we're going to close our tags. Then between the here is where we can add our recipes. So let's go ahead and add the recipe that we copied here. OK, so currently this is just going to add another recipe for the candle, but we don't want that. What we want to do is we want to have a recipe for our workstation removal tool and our workstation removal kit. So the way you reference them is you go to your items and you just copy this guy. So first of all, let's make a recipe for the tool. So we're going to go into our items. We're going to copy what we call it here. And then we're going to go to recipes and we're just going to paste it right there. OK, so this now this recipe will now allow us to craft a workstation removal tool. And this will give us one tool. But currently, the ingredients are saying, OK, we want yucca fibers and animal fat will give us a removal tool. That doesn't make much sense. So let's go ahead and see if we can find some more appropriate ingredients. Maybe forged iron. Uh, or maybe forged steel and wood would be a good one to, to do this with. So let's look for steel. And let's see if we can find it. So maybe local steel parts. Let's go ahead and see. Okay, so forged steel in the game is called resource forged steel in XPath or in XML language here. So we're going to go ahead and grab this, or I should say in, in internal game, game language. Um, so let's go and copy this one. And we're going to say 
we're going to move this and instead of yucca fibers let's just say we want forged steel and let's say to make this thing you need i don't know 10 forged steel that should be fine and then instead of animal fat why don't we have i don't know wood that'll, that'll work let's, let's have wood instead of animal fat so let's try and find wood so we're going to do a search for wood and there we go so wood in uh, the xml is called resource wood so let's go and copy this and then we're going to change out the recipe here to resource wood there you go and then how many wood do we want let's say we need like five wood for that okay so now this is going to add a recipe for us to craft the workstation removal tool so that's the first recipe all done and again it says uh four steel wood and iron we could use some iron as well why not let's add a third ingredient then so let's go open bracket ingredient name equals and then in here so forged iron let's go and just search for iron in our main recipes file so just search for iron here so that's our bundle of iron uh, let's search for forged iron because that might that might do it so forged iron and yeah forged iron is just called resource forged iron all in one word here so let's go and copy this guy and then we'll go ahead and put you in here it's always good just to copy paste things because that way you can be you can be relatively sure that there'll be no like spelling errors and things like that definitely a good thing and then let's say this will require three forged iron just 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 for like randomness sake we'll say three forged iron ten forged steel and five wood and that could be the recipe for our stuff there um so i'm gonna say yeah four steel wooden iron there you go yep by all means take him he's all yours just no touching me <laughs> uh let's see says so what are we kidnapping now jeez can't leave you alone for a sec <laughs> how you doing scotty welcome to the stream dude um so workstation removal tool can be crafted with these things now let's go ahead and add a recipe for the workstation removal kit so we're gonna go recipe so open brackets and on a new line we're gonna go recipe name equals and then let's go back into our items file again and this time we're going to copy this resource workstation removal kit so let's go and grab this one and we're going to copy you into there very good and we're going to say this is going to make one of them and we're going to close that bracket and then of course we're going to close the recipe tag with a bracket backslash recipe a couple of lines under okay let's add some ingredients for this one so let's say for the removal kit we're going to go open bracket ingredient space name equals and then let's see maybe we'll have some forged steel for this as well so resource forged steel and maybe this can be like three so count equals three then we're going to close the tag remember this is a self-closing tag because it has the backslash before the uh the closing bracket there so then you don't have to worry about doing a slash ingredient like this for example you don't have to worry about that with self-closing tags and let's say it wants to use let's say we want to use mechanical parts let's go and see what mechanical parts are in xml code let's go to the recipes here and let's just type mechanical and see if that comes up with anything okay so mechanical parts is literally just called resource mechanical parts okay so let's go and grab that and we can say resource mechanical parts and then we can say count equals let's say two mechanical parts um and let me just untap that then we can add why don't we add oil ingredient name equals and i think oil is resource oil i just saw it down there let's go and copy it so resource oil grab this guy so the ingredient name is oil for that one and then let's say it requires one thing of oil because i don't want it to be too easy to craft uh, mechanical parts wood and forged steel uh says i, I like changes stuff but not being taken against my will <laughs> oh yeah that's uh the, you're not as you, you just ate on so Sam says uh why so you, you're, you're saying that you are kidnapped <laughs> i don't i don't know at this i don't know at this point I, i'm just i'm just doing mod tutorials whether whether people are being kidnapped or not i'm not sure um so we've got ingredient name is oil and why don't we add i think wood is too easy to get let's add a resource that's also not too easy to get so why don't we add the last one is what do we add a let's see so you got four mechanical parts electric parts i just want to see what else is here uh we could add why don't we add acid because acid isn't easy to get so let me just type in acid see how that comes up it's just resource acid there you go so we'll get some resource acids right here and we'll put that into our recipes file because i don't want it to be too easy to craft these because they're quite powerful um so now you have to make the choice if you want to use them for getting for example the workstations or if you want to go ahead and use it to get 
the uh, wheels for a bike or something like that. So now it gives it adds a nice little choice. So now these are our recipes and they're added to the game. So let's go ahead and make our way into the game and we'll check that they actually work. So let's go over here. We're going to start seven days and let's get the start and see what we have. Um, Mo says, I know why everyone wants to kill me. I'm the psycho ass. No one wants that. <laughs> and, so uh, and Unforgiven says, oh, quite a question. If modifying the traders to restock after the third horde, is it the same? Is it the same thing as the others? What do you mean as the others? Let me know. Let me know what you mean by the others, and I'm sure I can help you out there. Uh, testing world. So we'll go back into our testing world here. I can go from there. It says, well, I have to sure of course the best folks stay stay with friends. Uh, uh, well, I have to sure of course best folks stay with friends. Nice evening. I think Sammy's had enough. Then are you had enough, Sammy? So if you are, then thanks for thanks for uh, blah, thanks a lot for coming along, and hopefully we'll see you very soon. I don't know what I'm reading either, Fancy. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know at this point. Okay. Well, they're talking about talking about kidnappings and stuff. It's probably not the best place for a modding tutorial stream. I'm just, just, just saying. Um, okay, let's go ahead and see now if the recipes are here. So why don't we have a look for the recipe for our workstation removal tool? So there you go. So we, if we just open workstation, there's the recipe for the workstation removal kit. So you can see it takes three four steel, mechanical parts, oil, and bottles of acid. And you can see the description will come in here. And then the workstation removal tool, we can go ahead and get with ten four steel. Three forged iron and five wood. So these will allow us now to craft these things and use them. Now, uh, let's see. Unlocked by this iron tool schematic. So we also have a bit of a problem with this one, though. You can see that there is um, this is unlocked apparently by minus sixty nine and the iron tool schematic. However, this is incorrect. This tool is not unlocked by those things. So that's a misleading description. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. So the next thing we want to do is go into the items. And we want to look at the melee tool workstation removal tool. So there is a thing in here that's called unlocked by, right? And currently this this is what it's saying. It's saying you can you can unlock this by put, putting points into minus 69er, or you can unlock it from an iron set schematic. And we don't want that at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and say nope, and we're just gonna remove that. That will solve the issue just by removing it from the XML. So if we come out of game now and come back in, so we're gonna exit, then we're just gonna re-enter we can see if that's fixed it. I, said, I didn't sell the kids, I mean, that, was, uh, that, was, that was your buddy Max. I'm not saying you started the kidnapping. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm not saying it to you, so it's fancy. You are not a very good best friend. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's it, I know, I know, but, but now you're here to save me, fancy. There you go. Same as the other files. Yes, it's pretty much the same as the other files. Yes, you can do that. So let's go ahead here then and check now in our workstation removal thing. So workstation removal kit. Now we should find that the tool does not have any padlocks or anything like that. So there you go. So now there is no way that people can get confused. Um, what unlocks it, which is really good. However, I think what we want to do is um, make this thing craftable on the workbench, right? Because it seems a little bit too easy to get these things. You know, if you just happen to luck out and find Forge Steel early game, it's a little bit too easy to get these things. So why don't we go ahead and make these things craftable on the workbench? So to do that, we're going to come out of here and we are going to change our recipes file just a little bit. So now I'm going to show you how to make something craftable on a workstation. So let's go and shut this down and go back into recipes. So to make something craftable on the workbench, what you have to do is under your recipe line right here, you're going to go right to the end of it after count, and we're just going to add craft underscore area, and then equals, and then inside here, we're just going to type workbench, all in lowercase. This will now put it onto the workbench, which is awesome. And let's do the same for this one. We're going to have craft area equals workbench. Nice. So now, if we pop back in game, we should see that these are available on the workbench. And we will go ahead and test that very soon. Uh, so now you need localization edits. Localization edits, well, I could do localization edits. However, it will show me in the game the crafting station that I need to use. So it should be pretty self-explanatory, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. My, says, I, I'm, kidna I, I'm kidding. No, I won't be fancy. And, uh, oh, he's throwing cookies at fancy. Okay, so we've got that done. Let's go ahead then and see about how we can maybe make these things lootable as well because we might be able to do some loot or some trading for it um so why don't we go ahead and make this 
a rare drop in working stiff boxes because this is going to be good so we got recipes for it but we also want it to be available maybe at loot and at traders so i've also got a loot fo folder here um, so if you want to open your loot one go back to your main mods folder and there should be for you guys a loot xml right here to open so we're going to go ahead and comment this one and we're going to say add the workstation removal kits to loot in working stiff boxes okay so this led it to working stiff boxes and that's the only place we wanted to find it uh throwing cakes at me fixes a lot of things as fancy yay um then says yeah cookies i don't know if he's just put a thing about the christmas event so yes she's building a christmas map for you guys so after the arena event the next one that's going to be out is the christmas event if you guys want to take part in that very soon we'll have a uh, thing on discord where you guys can sign up just like the arena event if you would be interested um date and time is going to obviously be to be confirmed but it's going to be a pretty big thing i'm not going to say too much i'll let madame wolfie discuss more on it if she wants to but i don't want to give away what it's going to be because it's going to be very very awesome says uh, fancy i almost got the pi main for you done nice okay so let's go ahead and add the workstation removal kits to loot so first of all let's go ahead and have a look at what the normal loot file looks like so we're going to go into data in the main seven days to die folder then we're going to go to config and let's open up the vanilla loot file so there's a lot of stuff in here. So this one is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit harder. But the first thing it opens with is loot containers. So we're going to remember that. So let's go and why don't we just type in working stiffs? Um, or working stiff. There we go. So working stiffs is this loot container right here. So and it has an item group called working stiffs. So let's go ahead and search for that item group right here. So if I just type this, okay. So this is the loot group name of working stiffs so what this says is in the working stiffs boxes it's going to look in this loot group and it's going to give you one of these items essentially was what it's going to do so when you loot a working stiffs box it goes ahead and then checks all the items in here so it will then go ahead and randomly pick one of these based on probabilities and a few other things i'll get into all this stuff in just a sec so what we're going to do is i'm going to see where the um i'm going to see this over here so in the loot container here it says it's going to give you between one and three items so this is what the count does here so it's going to look in this item group working stiffs and give you between one and three lots of stuff in there um this is the sound it makes when you open it this is the sound it makes when you close it so close cardboard and the loot quality template is based on just a basic template so that's that stuff there you don't really need to worry about too much we're just going to go ahead and add the tool and the removal kits to the working stiffs loot group so let's go ahead and copy this because we're going to want that and then we're going to go ahead and find that again so there are three properties you can have with this the first thing is the item name so we're going to have we're going to add a new item which is going to be our tool you can have the count which is how many how many you're going to get so this one here specifies a range so what it's saying here is in the working stiffs you can get repair kits and if you do get the repair kits it will give you between one and four repair kits also same saying it might give you like a uh, wood frame block between 10 and 30 might give you some rebar between 10 and 30 that's pretty much what it's what it's saying here the other thing is it has a probability now by default each of these have a probability of one unless specified otherwise so what this is saying is the wrench has a probability of 0 0.8 so compared to everything else you're slightly less likely to get a wrench in here um, and that allows you to specify how rare things are from the crates so you can also see that um, there's a probability template and that means that at low levels you have a very low probability to get things and it raises up higher as you raise your game stage um, but we're not going to worry about templates or probabilities for now this is something that you guys can explore a little bit more if you want to check the files we're just going to go ahead and add our items to the loop so let's go ahead and see what we got here so let's go ahead and set up an x path for this so we're, again we're going to need to do an append so we're going to do an append x path but this time it's going to be a little bit more a little bit more work involved to get to what we want so what we need to do is we need to do loot group a loot group whose name is working stiffs but the loot groups that all these loot group entries are underneath the main loot containers tag so the whole file starts with this tag here loot containers then underneath those you have loot prop templates and loot groups i believe so let's go ahead and come out of here uh, let's go past this one and that's another quality template okay so then 
essentially what we need to do is we need to go into the loot containers tag, then find the loot group that has the working stiffs name. And this is how we're going to do the XPath for it. So let's go back into our loot folder. So append XPath, and we're going to go forward slash. So the first tag in the XML is loot containers. Then inside that loot containers tag, we want to look for the loot group tag. So we're going to do another slash and say loot group. And of all those loot group tags, we want to find the one that has the, the name attribute. So we're going to do at name. And we want the one that has the one working stiffs. So this is going to um, then find any loot group that has the working stiffs name. And then it's going to append the items to it. And of course, we've opened a tag. So we have to go ahead and close it. So let's go ahead and do that. There you go. So we're going to go open bracket forward slash append. And there we go. And Relic, really, welcome to the stream, dude. How you doing? Uh, says I sent you a POI that a friend built. Uh, it says, yep, you've got to tell me your favorite colors. Friend says, ooh, it has, is a cookie shop. Ooh, nice. Uh, friend says, uh, what is the strongest aggressive animal in the game? Uh, zombie bear, I think, or a, or a direwolf, one of those two. And uh, Shaka, welcome to the stream as well. How you doing? Okay, so now let's go ahead and add our item into there, or both of our items. So what you want to do for this one is we're going to go... We're going to copy the tool, so we're going to grab this one, and we're pretty much going to copy the format that this loot uh, this loot uses. So let's go ahead and find the working stiffs one again. Okay, and uh, working stiffs, working stiffs. Here we go. So we need to do item. We so say it's an item tag, and we need to specify at minimum the name of the item. So let's do that first as a starting point. So we're going to add both of our items into working stiffs boxes. So let's go and find loot, and we're going to go item. And then we're going to do name equals and then paste that one in. And then we're going to go another one, item name equals. And then we want to put our workstation removal kit in there as well. So let's go ahead and grab uh, workstation removal tool. Where's the kit? There it is. Grab this one. And we're going to put you into that one. So what this is going to do is it's going to add these two items to the working stiffs loot so that when we loot working stiffs boxes, we now have a chance to find workstation removal tools and the workstation removal kits. Now, the workstation removal tool, I want to be kind of rare. Now, by default, when you set a probability attribute, prob equals, it's set to one by default. So if a probability attribute isn't specified, by default, it's just going to be prob equals one, just like that. If you want to make it rarer, you need to type a number between zero and one, something that's lower than one. So let's say we want to find, maybe this can be 0 0.2. So it's really, really rare. And then for the removal kits, well, they're going to be a little bit more common because the tool you only need one of, but then the kits you need multiple of. So why don't we set that to like 0 0.4? So these are going to be rarer than most of the other items in this loot group, but the probabilities is going to be 0 0.2 and 0 0.4. Now, sometimes you might want to have more than one of the item, and that could be very useful for the removal kit. So why don't we have a count? So let me make a space here. And if you want to specify a range, you can go count equals. If you want to specify an absolute value, so for example, if you always want to get like three, you just put count equals three. But if you want to get between one and three, for example, you could do count equals, then your minimum one and your maximum three. And that means now that if we do roll the workstation removal kit, this much of the time, we'll get between one and three of them. So if we do happen to land this in our loot box you get between one and three of them which is really really good so this is how we can do that and now it's pretty much added to loot so now when we loot working stiff boxes we'll have a chance to find these things in the loot as well which means that looters are now rewarded as well so you don't have to you don't have to go ahead and cr build a workbench first or find a workbench you can get lucky if you loot buildings it's always nice um as a as a modding tip if you're adding new items and blocks that require like certain things it's always nice to add to make it available in traders and loot and as a recipe. So that means that most styles of play can access it. Because remember in A18, they wanted to open up the play style for like different character builds. And you want to you want to reward all those character builds as much as you can, um, regardless of what they choose. Because otherwise, you, unless of course you're going for something that's really niche, like a class system, you want to make sure that this item is accessible in as many places as possible. Um, the Forgetful Fox still has a key to give away for 7 Days to Die. So if you don't own the game, make sure to join Discord for a chance to win. Yes, the Forgetful Fox still has the has the key. Um, that's very true. But yeah, join the Discord and you'll be in with a chance. Relic says, doing great today. Off work for a week with pay. So I'm quite jolly. Nice, dude. Um, let's see. But yes, the Forgetful Fox has once again forgotten. Because <laughs> the Forgetful Fox is forgetful. But that's the thing. 
Okay, so this will add everything to the loop. Now, the only way you can really test this is to actually place down some working sys boxes and open them all up. But we'll go ahead and just we'll go ahead and assume this works. We'll test it out properly in a minute. But the other thing we can do is add this to traders as well. So we can also make traders stock this thing. So that would be really handy. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So let's go ahead and find the traders file to see what that looks like. So let's make our items available in traders. So the trader, the traders file is actually really, really similar to the loot file. It's just named a bit differently. Instead of um, instead of loot groups and loot containers, it's just called trader item groups and trader item group. But you can see the um, this stuff inside it looks very similar to the loot folder. So you've got the item, you got a probability, and in some cases you have counts as well. So that's really good. So you can go ahead and uh, there's lots of different loot groups here. Let's find one that would be appropriate for the trader group. So hmm, where can we add this? We could add it to maybe, I think there's a group called Rare Tools. Um, yes, there's a group called Rare Tools. So what we could do is we could add the, um, we could add that to the Rare Tools loot. And then for the other one, for the repair kits uh, or the removal, removal stuff, we could add that to another group. So let's go ahead and add this to rare tools. Here we go. And uh, wait, that was a good way. Thought it was a kidnapping. <laughs> let's see. Metamorphic says, uh, Fear Fox and be right back. Oh, Metamorphic is going to be right back. Okay. See you soon, Metamorphic. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and add this to the trader item group for rare tools. So, like before, the trader item group tag falls under the main trader item groups plural tag. So we're going to go ahead and set up an X path to do this for us. So let's go ahead and open our traders file. So you should find this in your modlets. And let's make a comment in here to say, add the workstation removal tool to the rare tools no. trader item group. OK, and now we're going to set up an X path to do this. So we're going to go ahead and go append. So open bracket append X path. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look in the trader item groups. And then we want within that, that whole XML file, we want to look for the trader item group whose name is uh, not a resource workstation removal kit, but rare tools. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's actually give it the correct name, which is this one. So now we can add stuff into this loop group. And then, we're, of course, we're going to close the tag with a closing append. So now you can pretty much, if you want to, copy what you did in the loop file and put it in here. Um, but remember, the, the workstation removal kit is not really a tool. So we're going to add that to a different group. But let's go ahead and grab this one. Made it to a workstation removal tool. And we can put you into here. So we're just going to paste it in there. So it looks exactly the same as the loop file, the name, the probability. And you can specify a count if you want to. Let's put the probability up a little bit because, you know, rare tools are already rare. So we'll put that up just a bit. And there we go. Um, so now this will put the, the workstation removal tool into the rare tools trader item group. And we can go ahead and test that works with the trader. The next thing I want to do is put the removal kits into a different item group. So let's go ahead and uh, this is going to add the workstation removal kit to the and let's find an appropriate group to add this one to so let's go back into our main traders file so there's regular tools there's vehicle parts workstations decorative so there's decorative groups okay so that's uh coming into those ones let's prepared food food supplies arrow supplies we've got weapons and gun parts books weapons there will be um there will be a good tool we can add into here common books schematics uh any other good ones here farming and cooking recipes those are the books quests medicine rare medicine weapons there's got to be one of these uh all armor so these are all the armor ones okay why don't we see where the repair kits are in because that'd be good so if i type repair kit that is under okay repair kit is just under regular tools okay that's fine so this time we're going to add the removal kit into tools there we go it says scotty how did you think they got that game key <laughs> uh i don't know if he says i got pizza yum <laughs> um i was like Shh, fancy don't give away the secret all right so we're going to add the workstation removal kit into the tools group so this one is going to be 
pretty easy. Now we've got everything set up in our traders file. This is easy. The X path is going to be very similar. We're going to go append. Oh, I need to actually close my uh, comment out. So to the tools, trader item group. Okay, so now we're going to go append space X path equals, and this is going to be very similar. Trader, not 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 trader, <laughs> trader item groups slash, and this time we're going to look for the group trader item group whose name, and this time it's just going to be tools. There we go, and then of course we're going to close the append tag. So you can have, as you can see, multiple append tags in here if you want to. So now we're going to go ahead and find the Let's see, we're going to go and find the item in our loop folder because we already pretty much got this set up. And I think we could just pretty much copy this and put it straight in the traders file and that'll be fine. So in the traders file now, we can put item name and then we can have between one and three of these things in the tools group. So you might get lucky and find some removal kits in here. Now the last thing I want to do is make sure these things have proper values for their trader their trader files. So currently we have um, an economic value of 300 for a removal kit. I need to add an economic value for the tools as well just to make sure we have a good value here. So for our workstation removal tool the economic value is currently 500. Because this is a very powerful tool I think we should put this up to 1500. Because that means that then you will have to spend quite a lot of casino coins to get it, but then it is worth as much because then you can pick up workstations. And forgiven says, can you do an example for the vending machine how to make them restock every two days? Okay, I'll do that really quick for you here. So for the vending machines, vending machines is actually found under traders because technically it is a trader. So the vending machine, you go right to the bottom and it's the trader info ID is four. Now you'll see the reset interval is the one you want to change. So here's the reset interval. It's set to every one day. If you want to change it to two days, you need to make an X path that's going to change it to two days. Now this isn't going to be part of the modelet, but I'll I'll walk you through how to do that one because this is uh, this actually introduces a new a new type of X path you can use. So let's go and add, for example, then in our traders file. Um, let's do this. So for unforgiven, here you go. So for unforgiven, we're just going to say this one, make the vending machine restock every two days. Okay, so instead of using an append this time, we want to change something within an attribute, right? So currently, what we've been doing is we've been adding stuff to like the inside of an X path. But what we want to do now is we want to change an attribute, which is kind of within this tag. So instead of using an append, we're going to use something called set attribute. Now this is a bit more of a complicated one. So let's go ahead and do this one. So this time we're going to open a bracket and this time we're going to say set attribute. All in lowercase and no spaces. So set attribute x path so we need to specify an x path but this time we also need to specify the name of the attribute that we want to change as well okay so there's two two parameters we need and then we're going to close that out okay now the way set attribute works is you specify your x path to get you to the nodes that you want then you specify the name of the attribute and then within these tags you specify the value of what you want it to change to so the new value goes within these tags here. So let's go ahead and make an X path to change the restock for the vending machine. So the vending machine is right here. So this is trader info ID is four. And I think that's falls all under trader item groups. That's trader info. Let me just check. Ah, no trader item groups is now trader info. Okay, I don't know if that goes under a different tag then. Trade info, trade info, trade info. So yeah, it looks like this is actually outside of the trader item groups. Um, so let's go and see if we can do this one then. So what we need is the trader info ID of four, and then we want to set the reset interval attribute. So that's what we want to do. So let's go ahead and uh, do this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy this guy here. So to access this one, we're going to go and say in our traders file now, we're going to go, so the X path is going to be forward slash, and then if I copied it, oh no, I didn't copy it, so we're just going to do trader underscore info, and we want to find the trader info that has the ID of four, which is for the vending machine. So this is why comments are useful, because if they hadn't commented that, we'd have never known it had been a vending machine. So we want the ID attribute that has a value of four. So let's go and put that in. 
into our X path. So we're going to go to traders. And then in the square brackets, we're going to say ID equals four. And then that's going to that's going to point the X path to this node right here. So then the pointer will be right on this one. Now we need to set the name of the attribute that we want to change. So in this case, the attribute name is reset interval. So if we go into here and then go back to our traders file, inside the name parameter, we're going to say this, the reset interval. And now inside the opening and closing brackets, we're going to remove new value. This is what it usually is. And to set it to two, we just change that to two. And then once you load that up, it will then make the vending machine restock every two days of the trader. And that's how you do it. So for Unforgiven, I will copy this for you right here. And I'll chuck it in the uh, I'll chuck it in the stream chat just so you can see. Um, let's go and put, put it in there for you. Hopefully it will um hopefully it will not remove any of my stuff. Uh, name is reset, so that's um, yes, I think that did it fine. So there you go, Unforgiven. That's how you'll make the thing restock every two days. I believe if there is issues with it, let me know. Um, and I'm sure I can help you out with it as well. But that's pretty much a rough idea how you would use that to change an existing attribute that's already there. Currently, we've just been adding new ones. But if you want to change stuff, set attribute or set X paths are the one you need to use. All right. So there's the thing for Unforgiven. I'm going to comment this out for now because this is not part of the mod that I'm making, but we'll keep it in there just if we need it for reference later. So you can comment out bits of X path if you want to um, just to deactivate them. That's really helpful in debugging, by the way. Okay, so there's the traders all done. Um, let's see. So, Wolfie, you make the cookies. You get as many as you want. Let's see. So, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Right, let's go ahead then and continue. So, now we should find those in the traders. So, the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into game and we're going to go and check that all these changes have worked. So, let's go into here. Going to start seven days to die here. And let's see if this works. And uh, it says you have you have a space where not needed. I have a space where not needed. Hang on a second. Let me see. Was this on something I commented out, or was it somewhere else? Let me see. Let me see. Space in the code where not needed. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's see if the XPath thing throws an error for me then. So let's go continue. We'll see if we get any yellow text. So press F1 in the console, and let's see if we get anything yellow or red. If we do get anything yellow or red, then we can go and see. Yeah, from did not apply. Trade item groups, trade item group name equals rare tools. Okay, so as you can see, we do have some yellow text right here. So it says the workstation removal did not apply this appendix path right here. So we're going to have to figure out why that is, which is fine. Um, so let's come out of game because that's obviously a bug. So that's how we can start debugging. It will tell you which hex paths do not apply, and then we can go ahead and figure it out. So trader item groups, trader item group. Oh, who's yeah, not so yeah, Madam Wolfie says, she told me so. Um, okay, so let's see here. So let's see why this is not working as intended. So if we go to the traders file, there's a really good tool online you can actually test X paths with. So why don't we go ahead and grab this guy, grab the entire XML file. I'm just going to go Control A, Control C. Then I'm going to go to the to the valuable resource we know as the internet. And I'm going to type in to Google, this is something I use a lot, X path tester. So if you want to test your X paths to see what's going on with them, you can go ahead and put your XML in here, and then you can get your X path and put it in here. Because as you can see, I've got I got a load that I've been testing in the past. So let's go ahead and copy the X path here that we had before. So this guy here, try to item group, just making sure I spelled it correctly. And let's go and see if we can figure out what the what the problem is here. I probably just specified something incorrectly here. So name is this. Okay, test XPath. And it's saying that I am getting no match. Okay, so why is that? Traders by Marco. Ah, this is why. Because the start of the XML right here, I thought there was something fishy about this one. If we go right to the start, you can see the actual start of the XML is actually a traders tag. So I've been looking for the opening trader items group tag, but this one actually falls underneath the traders tag. So what we have to do is um, change this X path a bit. 
so that it actually takes the traders tag into account as well. So the traders tag is going to be, uh, let's add, add it in the XPath. So what we're going to do is in front of this whole thing, I'm going to put slash traders. And this, I think, should fix it. Let's go ahead and see now. Text XPath. And there you go. Now it's actually pulled it out. So that's going to fix, that's now pulled out this item group and that will fix it for me. Okay, so what we have to do then is adjust that in our code as well. And for Unforgiven, this will also affect what I did for you too. So instead, we're going to add a slash and we're going to put traders right there. And for this second one here, we're going to have slash traders right there. There we go. And for Unforgiven, your one is going to turn into this. So let me go ahead and copy this one for you again. Now this should work for you. <laughs> I think that will that'll go. Uh, let me see. So, and Dylan, welcome to the stream, dude. How you doing? Thank you so much for popping in, dude. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and copy this guy. And I'll set, I'll put that in chat for Unforgiven. Uh, hang on a second. Wrong, wrong internet tab. This one. Let me put that in chat for you, Unforgiven, so you've uh, got the updated one. So this one should work now. Here we go. One, two, three. Done. So that should be this. There you go. That's, that's for you, Unforgiven. So hopefully that will uh, that'll solve your vending machine issue. If not, let me know. Um, and now let's go and launch the game again and check that that XPath actually applied. So go over to here. One, two. Okay. And this guy says, "Did I chase everyone away?" And everyone says, "Nope, that's what I do." All right. Let's see it. So let's go continue game and start. So now let's go and see if there's any more yellow text about the XPath not working. Let's see, so so far I don't see any. This is a good sign. Good signs, we haven't got any red, no yellow. Did it work? I think it worked this time. And log it in. Right, any XPath issues? Uh, nope, no XPath issues this time, so that fixed it. Okay, let's go find a trader. So let's go CM, DM. And we're going to go and fly and see if we can locate a trader. I know there's one in the forest somewhere, so let's go fly. Let's go fly over here. I think there's one like over here. He's like by he's like by some mountains or something, if I remember rightly. Okay, let's see if I can see if I can find him. Yeah, I think he's over here. Uh, where are you? There you are, right there. So let's go to uh, go to Mr. Trader, and let's see if these items actually showed up. They might not show up because it's all based on probability. I got just the thing for what's ailing you. But let's go and see in his inventory if he has workstation. Nope. Thanks but we can anyway. we can keep testing. Careful out there. Let's go ahead and restock and try again. So we'll just double check that these things show up. Uh, let's see workstation. There's always shamway up the road. You can try looting. Let's see. Workstation, did it appear now? Nope, let's see if it appeared in the secret stash, because sometimes it'll appear in there. There you go, the workstation removal kits appeared in here, and as you can see, we got three of them. Which is awesome, there you go. At least you're not alone and being hated then, says, uh, says, well, I think it's going to say, uh, that, was, uh, that was so quick to be hated. Uh, let's see, I was going to say, yeah, it looks, looks like I helped. That's okay. So yeah, as you can see now, this appears in the trader item groups. You have a great day now. Let's go and see as well. Oh, we have a, uh, a wolf attacking a zombie here. Let's just go and kill him. There you go. Right, so let's go and check also that the working stiss boxes will occasionally spawn these removal kits as well. So let's go and look for a working stiss box. Okay, let's uh, get a few of these down. And let's see if these spawn in these crates as well. So let's put like, I don't know, 10 of these down. Let's see if we get lucky. Okay, and let's go and grab the the admin tools. So if I just type admin here, I should find in the dev blocks. Uh, I think it's the super digger. This allows me to just destroy stuff instantly. Here we go. So the admin super digger. So now I can open these boxes really quick. So I can just go boop, and let's see what's in here. So did this spawn it. This one didn't. Let's keep testing just to make sure it worked. So sometimes with looting, you have to. Just keep testing these things until you see it in there just to confirm it works. But it should be in one of these if we get lucky. Ah, there it is. There's the tool. So the tool appeared in this one. Very nice. So where's this removal tool appeared in there? Let's see if we can get the kits. 
So there's two that appeared in one of them. Not that one. Let's have a look. Uh, nope, not in that one. Just double check the kits are going to show up. Not in that one. Just a shovel. Not in that one. And not in that one. Okay, so we didn't get any kits, so we still need to verify that it appears. So this is this is what happens with testing. You just got to keep going until it works, especially with probability mechanics. You just got to keep testing it. Okay, so let's go ahead and grab this guy. And open all these boxes up. Oh. And let's go and test all these. That, that's the one that probably had it in. <laughs> uh, so we've got generator banks, we've got acid. That one had a wrench in it. Oh, this one had nothing. This one had nothing in there. So yeah, I just need to check that the kits will actually show up in here. It should do because it's under the same group. But I just want to double check just to be sure. Nope, not that one. Got some dye in that one. Ah, that's a repair kit. Okay, let's put this out some more. So yeah, testing loot is uh, a long process. Especially if you get unlucky. But it does have a rare probability to spawn, so... We're lucky we actually got the other one so quick. Let's see. Nope. This one? Come on. It's gotta be one of these. So yeah, you can see they're pretty rare. But this gives you kind of a feel of how rare they are as well when you do this. So you can uh, you know then if you've got your probabilities right. I don't think I have, because I don't want these things to be really, really easy to find. So like okay. here. Anything there? Nope. Nope. Not in there. And not in there. So there's not be coming away? Yeah, there is. Did I kill him? No, I didn't kill him. This thing does like no entity damage. Okay, let's go and try some more. So yeah, we still have to start to see how rare these are. So I've only got one tool and I got very lucky with that. So yeah, as you can see, it's pretty rare. Pretty rare. So again, let's try again and keep going until we get it. Just to verify that it does actually show up. Okay, oops, didn't do that. Never mind, that, that, that one probably had it in as well. So keep searching these working cis boxes. But as long as the tool showed up, the other one should show up as well. Two iron pickaxes. This one, let's see. Nope. See the armor parts another? That's a pretty good find. This one? Yeah, come on. Uh, nope, not in that one. Anyone in this one? Nope. This one? Steel pickaxe? That's actually a really good find. Let's see. Uh, nope. Not in that one. So it appears that this thing is a little bit more rare than I would like. Yeah, the, the, the kits are pretty rare. It would seem. Because I'm not getting many at all. So we just double check. If not, we can adjust some probability values just to give them a higher chance to show. Let's see. Nope. Got some repair kits though. Let's see. Nope, not in that one. Okay. Not in that one. And... No, no one. Okay, so the tool showed up once, but the kits did not show up at all. Okay, so I probably want to make them a little bit more common. As uh, so it says, I'm here for wolf, for Wolfie and cookies. I see, I see. Um, and Zero is hiding his cookies. <laughs> um, I won't steal it, I promise. ARN says, Scully, I own your song. I listen to it and cherish it. Says you're like, right. <laughs> now let's see. Um, ARN says, it's amazing. So it's like, I know, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and check on the probabilities then. So why don't we adjust the probabilities on our loot just a bit to verify it appears. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our loot folder into our loot document so yeah this is 0.4 so why don't we upgrade this a little bit to make it like let's make it like 0.5 and let's make that 0.9 there you go so now it has a better chance of showing up once once we've verified it appears i can go ahead and test it uh, i can go ahead and then turn back the probabilities again to go from there so yeah it's a little, little interesting uh interesting probability mechanics test it's very difficult to get loot right i'll be honest it's not easy getting loot right is one of those more difficult things to do but hopefully now it will show up and go so it says just join what's going on uh we're doing uh we're doing some uh we're doing some modding and uh working on loot groups and uh your says max don't tell scotty scotty doesn't know all right i won't tell scotty i, I won't tell him Okay, so let's come back in the world and let's do some more testing. 
So CM, DM, turn those things on. Okay. So initialize the world, no XPath errors, hopefully. Nope, no XPath bugs. Good, good. Okay. So now I got that, we can go ahead and do the working sys box again. Let's go and find some more. So some sealed working sys boxes. Never seen so many working sys boxes. Oh, I already had some here anyway. Never seen so many of these until now. Okay, wait, those are webbench boxes. Not that one. <laughs> I didn't want those, I wanted these. There you go. Right, let's, let's do the correct ones. So I picked up like 10 webbenches. Right, so let's keep testing these. There you go. And let's go ahead and open each one of these and see. So the kit show up this time? Let's see. The pickaxes, shovels. So our basic tools are showing up. Not in that one. This one? Nope. This one? Nope. See that parts? That's actually pretty good though. This one? Okay, there's the tool. Okay, so the tool the tool is working in there. We have nothing in that one. Come on, the kit's gotta be in here somewhere. If I did specify it wrong, it would throw red text as well, so it's just gotta be in here, just rarer than I would like. Okay. Paintbrush anvil. Let's see. Anything in here? Nope. Another fire axe. Come on, we're gonna find these two we're gonna find these things eventually. Uh nope, still didn't find them. Okay, more testing. Let's go. Spam boxes. Spam boxes until we find it. There you go. We had to verify it's there. I'm sure it is. This one. Nope. This one. Nope. Two wire tools though. That would be pretty good. Gas. See, gas isn't very common in these things either, so... Just gonna open these and see. Nope. Let's see. Nope. Nope. Repair kits. Where are these things? God, it's gotta be in one of these last four. We'll be good. Uh, ah, there we go. Workstation removal kits. They do show up indeed. Good. So we've now verified that both of them show up in there. And we actually got a second tool as well. Nice. So that's uh, very lucky if you get two tools. All right. So that actually shows up in loot. And that's all good. Uh, Max is oblivious to the to the marvels in chat. Love you, Max. <laughs> of course, I'm oblivious to the marvels in chat. I'm oblivious to everything. I'm a hashtag blind bugger. So, you know, that's I'm oblivious, I'm oblivious to everything. Um, okay. So let's go and adjust the probabilities of these a bit then. So I think we can probably lower the probability of this again to maybe 0.3. And then I'm going to change this to... Let's have that as 0.8. I think that'll be some good probability values for those. Okay. Now, we've got everything done here. We've got recipes working. We've got loot working. However, it seems a little bit odd that you'd be able to craft these from the very start of the game, right? Because, you know, there's 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 things that can unlock recipes. Now, currently, with a workstation removal tool and workstation removal kits, you can just build them straight away if you get the correct parts and find the workbench. Uh, you're right. Thank you so much for the donation. says, is your real name Max? Spoiler, mine isn't. <laughs> my, mine, is, uh, mine is Max is my real name. That is my real name. Um, okay. So what we're going to do now is currently we can craft this tool and this item straight away. We don't actually have to do anything um, in order to be able to craft it. So what we want to do is make it a little bit harder to craft and maybe put it behind a perk. So why don't we put this, because we're actually on about taking stuff up in the world and using like a tool and some removal, that sounds like we're salvaging, right? So why don't we put this, these recipes, under the salvage operations perk? Because I think that would be really, really cool if we could do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, progression. And we're going to look for salvage operations. So let's just type salvage with a capital S. And here we go. Right, so these ones are a little bit harder because as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of stuff in these in these perks. So let's go through bit by bit and tell you what these do. So the first thing here, perks name is perk salvage operations. That just tells you the name of the perk um, and its parents is the scavenging skill. So that means that you will see the salvage operations appear underneath the scavenging skills in the perception tree. Um, the symbol is what it shows up as, like the image that shows up for it. And the name and description is this 
and this. So these are pretty much self-explanatory. The next thing is the level requirements. So to get level one of salvage operations, you need to be, you have to have your perception attribute greater than or equal to level one. Um, and that, that just means you need this more than level one. To get level two, right here, you need your progression level in the perception attribute to be greater than or equal to level two. And then for level three, you need it to be greater than three. For level four, it needs to be greater than level five. And then in levels five, it needs to be greater than seven. So that just tells you the level requirements to unlock the perk. The next thing is the effect group, and this tells you um, what it does. So the first thing it does, passive effect name, crafting tier. This will affect the crafting tier of the tools, and it adds it adds two between two and five on uh, between levels two and five. It will add one up to one and four. So usually you craft quality one wrenches. At level two, it will add one, so you craft quality two. When you get to level five, it will add four, so you craft quality five wrenches. The next thing is it unlocks some recipes, right? So the first one this does is when you get to um, when you purchase the first one here, it unlocks the wrench. So between levels one and five, um, it will set the recipe for the wrench to be unlocked. The other thing is it also reduces um, the crafting time as well, up to, I think, 50% for salvaging and things like that. So that's pretty good. So I think that also um, that reduces the um, amount of time it takes to craft scrap. So the next thing we need to do is check this one so this one here is saying in this effect group is the holding item has tags means the item you're holding has to have a certain tag for the perk to apply to it in this case perk salvage operations the wrench is the only thing that has that so it's saying if you're holding a wrench between um as you level up it increases the block damage by 20 percent each level uh the next one is it increases the entity da entity damage by 10 percent each level um and then the last one is the harvest count and it pretty much says between levels one and five, you get up to 100% extra harvest going up in increments at 20%. So it's a big old, uh, big old mouthful, right? So a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in there. Um, so I said, a backpack's a quicker, a quicker loot time. It might make sense to shoot twice. <laughs> yeah, they, I think they are. Yeah, I could, I could probably try that. Um, there we go. So uh Uran says i have a massive delay i'm gonna write it out and reset in a bit no worries um so yeah what we're gonna do in this in this case we want to look at um recipe tag unlocked and this this one is going to allow us to unlock some recipes so what we want to do is we want to unlock the recipe for our tools so let's go ahead and see if we can append another recipe tag unlocked to the first effect group of salvage operations so let's go and see what that falls under so let's go into our progression file and let's first of all do a comment to tell us what it's going to do so what we want it to do is we want to add uh, or to yeah add an unlock for the workstation removal tools under the salvage operations pack okay so this is what we want to do. Next thing, we've actually got to do it. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to do that. So, so next thing then is let's look inside the progression file and just see how the structure is. So what we need to do is look in the perk tag that has the salvage operations name, but the perk tags fall under another tag. Let's see what that tag is. So the perks, fall, the perk tag falls under the plural perks and that all falls under the progression tag okay so it's progression then perks then perk so that's going to be our x path so what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to do an append again so we're going to open a bracket and go append x path so the main tag is perks uh, or progression sorry then we want the perks and within all those perks we want to find the particular perk which has a name of and then that's going to be perk salvage operations. So let's go and grab this one and just find uh, salvage again. So that's called perk salvage operations. So let's go and grab that one. Okay, so perk salvage operations right there. Now we're not quite done. Uh, let's go and close up the tag, but we're not quite done because what we need to do within this one is we don't want to append it to the very end of this, this whole thing. We want to append it to the first effect group. So you can see there is several effect groups here. There are actually two of them. 
what the current xpath is going to do is it's going to insert stuff here. That's what our current xpath is going to do. But what we want to do is insert it right here. That's what we want. But currently our xpath is going to do it down here. So what can we do? Well, the first thing we can do is we can remove all this so I don't have anything. We're going to select um, an effect group. So the next thing we want to do is select the effect group within this perk. So currently we've selected the perk of salvage operations, but the next thing we want to do is select the first effect group. Now, what you have to be careful of with this is the effect group doesn't have any attributes. So you can't specify it like over here, we, could, we specified we wanted the perk with this name. But over here, the effect groups don't have any names or other attributes associated with them. So how can we only select the first one? Well, this is actually really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to progression. So what we want to do is within this perk, we want to look into the effect group. And then to make it select only the first one, we're going to open our square brackets and literally just put one. And that's it. This will now select only the first effect group within the salvage operations perk. And now that will go ahead and append the X path into right here. So the, the stuff now will be appended here. So anything else we add in here will now go there. So the next thing we want to do is actually unlock the recipes. Okay. So what we can do is why don't we copy this guy here? Because this is the one that unlocks recipes. So let's go ahead and copy this one. So we're going to go ahead and say passive effect name is recipe tag unlocked. That's the one we need. So let's go into our progression file and we're going to add this in. So we're going to say recipe tag unlocked and we're going to set level. So next thing we want to say when which level is it going to be required to unlock? I'd say this should be salvage operations three should be required to unlock this. So we're going to change one to three. So this means that when you're between levels three and five in salvage operations, this recipe will be unlocked. The next thing we have to do is set the recipes that are unlocked in the tags. Now, all you have to do for this is give a comma separated list of recipes. So we want both the workstation removal tool and the workstation removal kit. So we're going to copy this guy and we're going to put him here as our first tag. And then we're going to put a comma and then we're going to go and get the workstation removal kit. And we're going to put you Where'd you, where'd you go? Where'd, where'd you go? There you are. I'm going to put you right there. So now what it's going to say is the passive effect name is going to say between levels three and five of salvage operations. So as long as we're above level three in salvage operations, it's going to set these recipe tags to one. So it's going to unlock both of these recipes for us. So now we should be able to go into the game and see that uh, and, and see that these recipes are locked, right? Well, let's go and check. Let's go and check now if the recipes are locked in game. So let me go to, if I can find my Steam, would be good. I've got so many, I, I'm suffering from too many tab syndrome. <laughs> That's uh, something I suffer with a lot. Um, okay, so let's go login game here. Let's check our XPath worked primarily. Right, continue. And let's see. So any XPath errors. We got a little yellow text for missing objects, but that's fine. That's not to do with this mod. That's to do with another one that I'm working on. So still got to fix that one. <laughs> I don't know actually like how to fix that as well. I asked Guppy, but I'm not sure if he even knows how to do it because some, somehow I've gone wrong somewhere, but it doesn't affect gameplay. So it's okay. Um, so do we get any XPath warnings here? We got no XPath warnings. Awesome. So what we should be able to do now is see that the workstation removal recipes are locked. Let's see. Ah, they're still unlocked. They're on the workbench, but you can see these are actually not displaying the lock icon. Now, why is that, I wonder? Well, there's a couple of things we need to do in order to make this lock. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do. So the first thing we need to do is there is one thing in the recipes that I said I was gonna come back to later, and that was the tags, right? So if we go into the recipes file, the vanilla one, you'll see that some of them, if I can find one of these, has this one here. It has a tags property that we haven't specified for ours. And one of those tags is learnable. Now, any recipe that has a tag of learnable will be locked by default until you purchase a perk or read a skill book that then sets it to unlock. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the learnable tag to both of our recipes to lock them by default. 
which is really easy. So all we have to do is come to the end of our recipes here and type tags equals learnable. And then we're going to copy this guy here. And then we're going to put him into here, right there. So now this will lock the recipe by default until something else sets it as unlocked. That can be a perk or it can be a skill book or maybe even from something like completing a quest. It could unlock it as well. Um, and the other says, I'm back to the future. I am here now and not there. <laughs> so welcome back, you're late, right? So this will now lock the recipes and that should reflect in game now. So if we come back out of game and go back in, we should see that these things are now locked and we have to unlock them. And then we can go ahead and test whether salvage operations will actually unlock it. So let's go ahead and do that. It says, cool, learnable. Max, are you a teacher? You explain really well. I used to teach maths. So yes, uh, I am technically an ex-teacher. Okay, so back in the world, let's see now if our tools are locked. So workstation and huzzah, they are now locked. Now, there's one thing as well that we haven't yet specified. The other thing we haven't specified is the unlock requirements. Now, for any other recipes that are locked, uh, let's see if any show up here. Do you have any uh, locked recipes? So, for example, the forge, you'll notice there's also this thing, thing here that has the unlock list. This tells you the perk that unlocks it, and if there's a schematic in the game, the schematic that unlocks it. But unfortunately, our ones don't have it. As you can see, if I type in workstation, you can see that our ones don't have that nice little unlock tag. So unfortunately, right now, no one knows how the heck you unlock this thing. So the next thing we're going to do is add that. But first, before we do that, let's check that the salvage operations actually unlocks it. So what we're going to do, we're going to type in the console. This is how you give yourself loads of uh, XP to test out buffs and things. Go give self XP or one word and then type uh, a big number like a million. And that will level you up so you can spend some skill points. So now we should have a few skill points to spend. So I have 78 skill points to spend, which is fine. So if our perk works correctly, when we purchase when we purchase level three, it will give us the um, it will give us the unlocks for the recipes. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to go and purchase perception three, and then let's get salvage operations three. One two three so now now that we got number three let's check and as you can see the recipes are now unlocked and ready to be crafted you can see the lock has been replaced by the workbench it says as i could absolutely see you doing well that says you're right well thank you <laughs> i did i did teach for a little while yes it was uh, it was quite fun the only problem was uh, site issues it means um the buggers at the back would would get away with stuff and that would like lower my grade point average and things like that so i didn't teach for too long just because of that reason and um, is the behavior management was the was the main thing in teaching like they, they say teaching is like 90 percent behavior management and then 10 percent actually getting your message across to the buggers that are trying to that, that are trying not to learn anything <laughs> so yeah it's, it can be difficult it was for me it was a very difficult thing it was fun but it was very difficult um, especially coming up with like lesson plans, that was that was the that was the hard bit. Um, okay, so let's go and just reset my inventory real, real quick before I X the world. Okay, so the next thing you want to do then is set the unlock requirements as well. And you're like, says that sucks. Yeah, it was um it was just uh it was just a thing for me. Um, if I was teaching smaller classes, I could do really, like, I I had like a, a small set of ninth grades that I was teaching, and they were like they were bottom set mass mass uh, class, but they were they were amazing. A lot of them, like there, there's a couple of them that I mess around every now and then. And because the class is so small, I can keep, I can control it so much better, um, and it was it was really good. Like honestly, it was really good. Um, I would I I, th I think I'll say that you could you could describe them as a dream class. Even for a bottom set, they were they were a dream class because they would they they would absorb. Even even if they find it difficult, they would absorb stuff. It was great. <laughs> So yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, so yeah, I had some good, but then on the on the flip side, I had a top set seventh grade who were like geniuses for their level, but were just not interested in in learning anything, which which was really sucky. <laughs> and it's like if, if there's one thing that upsets me is a bright kid who lets the talent go to waste and, and who do, who doesn't want to further it. You know what I mean? It's just like because it's like you can do so much if you just put in the effort. I can see, I can see it, and they're just like, and they just don't. <laughs> um, so yeah, unfortunately, that was uh, that was the thing. Okay, so we have now got our um, workstations as learnable. So the next thing we want to do is set the unlock requirements 
And to do that, you remember there was a property called unlocked by that we previously removed from the claw hammer, right? We're going to go ahead or from the uh, workbench removal tool. So let's go ahead and add that back in. So we're going to go in our items, we're going to go property name equals unlocked by and then value. And then all you have to do is specify the name of the perk that unlocks it. So in this case, it's just perk salvage operations. There you go. And if we copy this guy to the other item as well, this will now tell us for both of the items what unlocks it. So let's go here and put you there. Let's go and just double check in game whether that works or not. So we can come back out of here, exit the world and re-enter it to reload the XMLs. And let's see if it works. Joshua says, Max, will you ever teach us how to make and import prefabs? I need to go ahead and do the uh, do some of the prefab edits and stuff myself because it's actually something I've never used. But I'm sure if I figure it out, I can do a tutorial on that as well, if, uh, if you guys would like to see that. Okay. So now, does our recipe display the unlock requirements? So let's go uh, workstation. Okay, workstation removal kit. It does. And now you can see it will now tell you that you need salvage operations to go ahead and unlock it. And you can go ahead and see the perk. So there we go, the, sal the salvager there. Uh, I see you'd have a next salvage more useful parts than the average scrapper. Craft fair quality wrenches, deal 30% more damage, harvest 60% faster, and gain 60% more resources when salvaging with wrenches. Now, there's one thing we could do to uh, actually help with the, uh, with the perk here. Um, now, you can see, currently this doesn't tell us that it's going to unlock the workstation removal kits or anything like that. So you would never know right now that it unlocks the workstation removal kits, which is kind of sucky. Uh, waste not, one not. Scrap items for more resources. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the description of this. Um, now, to do this, there's two ways you can do it. You can alter the base localization file, which is probably not the good way to do it. Or you could alter, you could alter the description key that it points to and then make your own one. And that's the better way to do it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and uh, turn off, uh, pause this to turn off these tweeting birds. So in the perk salvage operations, let's go ahead and look at the progression file. We want to adjust level three, right? So what this does here is uh, the effect description describes the uh, what it does. So there's a description and there is a long description. What we want to do is change the name of the long description to something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this guy and in our progression file, we are going to, I didn't really want to say that, that's fine, that won't affect anything. In our progression file, we are going to make another comment here, and this is going to change the description of level three salvage operations to include uh, workstation removal crafting. So yeah, this is what this is going to do. So what we need to do now is we're going to do, instead of an append, we're going to do another set attribute. So we covered this briefly before, but we're going to go over it again. So we need to do set attribute in lowercase. And then this requires an X path and it requires a name. So this is one that requires two parameters. And then we're going to close the tag here straight away. Set attribute, if I can spell it correctly. There we go. And Unforgiven says, uh, I sent one for your POI built by a friend of mine. Use it if you'd like for your mod. Thank you, dude. Mr. Golden says, always streaming while I'm in school. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, he says, yes, of course, you're a great teacher. I'm getting so many ideas just from the classes today. Nice, dude. Okay, so this is the set attribute function. So unlike append, it also requires the attribute name as well as the X path. So first of all, the X path to get to it is going to be very similar. We're going to have progression. Then from there, we need the perks, and then we need to look for the perk who is called, who has the name of perk salvage operations. There we go. But this time, we're not going to the first effect group. We need to find the, we need to find the passive effect to change. So what we need to find this time, instead of going into the first effect group, we need to go into the second one and then pick the third effect description. So this is how we're going to do that. We're going to go into effect group two. So instead of effect group one, we're going to go effect group two. And then we want to select the passive effect who has a name. And that name is going to be, uh, hold on. No, actually, it's not a name. It's just passive effect whose level equals three. 
Okay, so pass effect who's so not name, we want whose level is equal to in single quotes three. There we go. So that's a very long X path, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. And now what we want to do is we want to change the attribute to something else. So what we have here is this is the attribute we want to change this one that says rank three long description so we want to change the attribute called long description key so let's go ahead and grab this guy here and under our name area we want to put uh this one long description key so this is the x path that will lead us to the attributes that we want to change and then this is the name of the particular attribute that we want to alter so currently this attribute is called perk salvage operations rank three long description Right, that's what it's called here. So let's just copy this name. So this is what it currently is, but let's add FM on the end. So now it will look for one called Perk Salvage Operations 3 Long Description FM. So currently it will just show this in game. So now what we have to do in localization is we have to go ahead and make the description for it. So let's go down here and we're gonna go ahead and add this in fm on the end here so let's go into the main localization file and see if we can copy the existing description for already and then just add our own so let's go localization let's find perk salvage operations long description and we can literally copy uh copy all this stuff here where is that more when crafting wrenches okay so you can copy all the stuff here there we go and then we can just adjust it. And there's actually a, a bug in the vanilla code where there's a, a new line, so we can remove that. But that's fine. So we're going to go ahead and chuck that in there. And now let's go ahead. First of all, remove the new line. We don't want that there. And now we're in here. We could also include um, if we add a new line here, we could say unlocks crafting of workstation removal tool and workstation removal kit there we go and that now should point instead of it pointing to the long description without the fm it will point it to our custom one which also has that little bit in there um let's see and our burns welcome to the stream and the Husey gaming uh how you guys doing thank you so much for popping in uh, and our ben says well that that's a good xml tutorial x software engineer thank you so much dude um says although i'm not even a programming per uh, person but i understand what he's saying yay well that's good i'm glad i'm explaining it well i, I kind of think i'm not explaining it well but if you guys understand great i'll keep going um so now what it's going to do is so let's let's review what it does so currently in the vanilla game the description for rank three looks for this in the localization file what we've done in our progression file is we've said okay pick the one that has the rank three long description and instead change it to use this one. So now it's going to look for long desk FM. And then because that doesn't exist in the vanilla localization file, in our localization file, we've specified it and then we can make our changes to it in here. So in game now, this will show up as this. Now, because we've made localization changes, unfortunately we have to come all the way out of the game and then we have to go back in the game. So we have to exit completely because like Sphere2 said in the first tutorial, localization will actually ch um, actually persist because it's required to load the game menu. So we have to go ahead and restart the game when we make localization file changes, which is fine. We can do that. And we can go from there. So we'll go ahead and make our way into here. Start the game up once again. And then we shall just continue from where we left off. And then we'll see if rank three has now been updated with a new description. Uh, Arvan says, you're doing great. Give yourself more credit. <laughs> well, as long as I'm doing okay for you guys, that is all good. I'm just happy that you guys are understanding, which is nice. Okay, so let's load up our well once more time. And let's see now if we've got this ready. So we'll load up the world. And if everything is working as I think... We're going to progression now and going to salvage operations three. Uh, oh, it did not change it. It's now that for some more useful, some more resources in salvaging a wrench. Okay, so I'm guessing there's an xpath error. Let's go and see. Uh, do we have an xpath error in here? Uh, warning. Battle Maxwell Gaming. That's the breadcrumbs. Hmm, because it's not updated the description for some reason. 
Welcome back to the Fruit Shader. Why did you not update? Did I do something wrong in here? I think I probably did something wrong here. Because this is still using the second one. Let me just double check that it didn't apply to another one that I didn't didn't want it to do. So back into here. Salvage operations, because this should have updated it, but I guess I did not do it correctly. Yes, I did not I did not do it correctly, so something is amiss. Uh, so let's go and see what could possibly be wrong. Uh, you ever thought about coding professionally? I think you'd be good at it, said Joshua Harrod. I have done, I have some, I had done some in PHP, and you're right, says, uh, gotta run, ta ta for now. Thank you so much, dude. And yes, uh, Jonah Games, I am using an SSD. Welcome to the street, by the way, guys. How you doing? Okay, so yeah, something is not quite right here. So let's go and check in our XML and see what could possibly be wrong. What could possibly be wrong? I have no idea. Let's go and see. So it could be in the localization that we've just not had enough commas or something like that. Let me see. So savage operations, so it's progression perks, new. Okay, so that's fine. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five commas there. So this is specified correctly. Okay, so what's going on here? So effect description level is three. Let's go ahead and check our XPath to make sure it's actually pulling out the thing we want. Because it could be that our XPath is off. And that would make sense if it's not changing anything. So let's go into here and let's open up an XPath tester. So XPath tester. And let's try this out. So we're going to put our whole XML document in here. There you go. So that's the whole progression file from vanilla. Then we're going to go and get our stuff here. Um, okay, so we want to grab this guy. And let's go and copy this. And then we can slap that in there and see if it works. If this doesn't work, then I will I will be unsure as to what's going on. Because I've done it before for other things and it's worked absolutely fine. I can check my phone one and see if it's um, a thing from there. Okay. So let's go ahead and check here. So effect level is three. Test X path. Does this pull out the correct bit? Okay, no match. So something is amiss. So progression, perks, perk, name, salvage operations. Okay, so it is a passive effect, right? Let me just make sure that. So why don't we take out some of these attributes and just see. So this is how we can debug our XPath. Take out one bit at a time and see if this works. Does this one work? Okay, so this works. This gets us um, our effect group two. Point name, how long has tags. Ah, that'll be why. We did a passive effect, but it's actually an effect description. So that that will be why. That'll be where I went wrong. I I asked it to look for a passive effect with that ID, but that doesn't exist. So that'll be why it went wrong. So let's go to progression. So yeah, I asked it to look for passive effect, but it's actually an effect description. So let's actually go and take this one. And now, if I put my effect description there instead. Level is three. Let's go and just test this X path to see if we get it. So let's copy this one, uh, or cut it and then repaste it in. That's fine. Let me try this. This one is probably what I needed to do. So we're gonna copy that one and test it. Does this work now? This one does. There we go. So you can see this gives us the effect description and it gives us the level and it gives us the attributes. So that was what was wrong. Okay, so let's go ahead and come out of game here and come back in and this should fix it. So continue game, and let's see if this fixes it. And Ruby, welcome to the stream, how you doing? Is it the dark black text? No, no dark black text. Um, the dark black text is just the value we're replacing it with, so that's actually fine. Um, call us what you want, as long as you don't call us late for dinner. <laughs> and uh, so how are you doing, Devlin? Thank you so much for popping in as well. Um, let's see. Um, there we go. So this should solve it. Let's see. Have we solved it? Let me see. So let's go CM, DM, uh, get into creative. Not that we really need it, but let's go salvage operations. Does number three have what we need? There we go. Look at that. So you seem to have a knack for salvaging more useful parts than the average scavenger. Craft fair quality wrenches, deal 30% more damage, have 60% faster, and gain 60% more resources when salvaging with wrenches. Unlocks crafting of workstation removal tool and workstation removal kit. There we go. So now we've got ahead and 
adjusted that description, and that's how you would adjust the description of a perk in order to uh, in order to change it to allow people to know what your perk actually does, which is awesome. There you go. Iron gut is my favorite. I hate getting food poisoning. Yeah, that's uh, that's annoying when that happens. Um, yep. So that's everything, and that works absolutely fine. Now, the other thing we could do that we haven't done yet is you might remember that most things have a schematic that unlocks them, right? But currently, we don't have a schematic that unlocks the workstation removal kit and the workstation removal tool. I think it might be to our benefit to include a schematic because that means that then people who prefer to loot and don't want to go into the perception tree also have a chance to go ahead and get it. So looters especially will then be able to have a chance to unlock the recipe to craft these things. Now, fortunately for us, um, schematics in this is much easier than it used to be before. So let's go ahead and go to items into our vanilla items folder. And we're going to look for schematic and we're going to look for schematic, no quality master because this is the base thing that all the schematics extend from. So let's go into here. So all we need to do here is get an existing schematic and then change it for what we need. Okay, so this is how our schematics work. You have the schematic name, which is just what it's called. Um, this is what it extends. We'll get into extends in a little while. For now, just take it that extends is what you need. Um, custom icon you've seen already, so the, and you've already seen the unlocks and unlocked by stuff, so you guys know what this does already. The only thing we need to do is um, this one here. So what this does is triggered effect is when you do something in game, it can trigger something to happen. Now the trigger on this one in particular is on self primary action end. So that means that when you click left mouse button and the action has happened. So for example, if it's a melee weapon, you click your left mouse button and you swing. Once that action has ended, the triggered effect will then trigger. Uh, in this case, because it's a schematic, the primary action is to read it. So once you've read it on self primary action end after a left click, this thing is going to modify a CVAR. Now, don't worry about what CVARs are, they're just internal game variables. You can think of them like tags, but what this will do is it will modify that and it will set thrown ammo pipe bomb, the name of the item that we want to unlock, and it will set it to one. And essentially, that means that it will unlock the recipe for us. It pretty much does what the salvage operations perk would, would do for the workstation removal kits, but in schematic form. So it's slightly different. And then it will also, this one here, on self primary action end. So again, after you've read it, it will give you 50 XP. So that's pretty much what the self primary action end stuff does. So primary action is left click, secondary action is right click, but we'll get more into that in a little while. Uh, so let's see. So Avagon says, can you do an example on how to add healing bedrolls and an action to lay down on the bed to heal? Hmm. First one, probably second one. I will have to look into that a little bit more. Uh, Mr. Golden says, is it possible to have all the skills? So this in testing and 251 didn't get me enough points for everything to be filled out. Well, I think um, the max level is 300. So 300 skill points, I think would get you all of them. I think you would just about get all skills, although getting to level 300 in this one is going to be pretty crazy. So what we're going to do is we're going to make two schematics. We're going to have one for the tool and then one for the kit. So let's go ahead and do a little comment here inside our append. And it's going to be new schematics to unlock workstation, removal tools and kits. OK, so first one we're going to do. We're going to paste the schematic entry here and we're going to go and grab the workstation removal tool. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy everything but schematic and we're just going to replace that there. So then this is the schematic for the workstation removal tool. And then instead of uh, the custom icon being a thrown ammo pipe bomb, we want our custom icon to be the same as the one for the, melee, the workstation removal tool, in which case this time it's the claw hammer. So we're going to go ahead and actually copy these two properties here. So the icon and the tint, because we want to have the same icon as the item. So let's go ahead and change the custom icon, remove that one. And then we're going to paste this in and that will make it have the same custom icon as the claw hammer with the same tint. Now, the next thing you want to do is let's go ahead and get this guy here again without the word schematic. Now this is going to unlock the tool. So this will unlock the tool and that's what the property name does here. And then on the triggered effect, we just have to change the C bar from throwing ammo pipe bomb to the tool, just like that. And again, it will give you 50 XP. Now we do have to go ahead and grab this guy and 
we need to localize it because currently this will just say melee tool workstation removal tool fm schematic which is yeah not very good so let's go ahead and localize this one in here so we can do it let's do it down here so we're going to go melee tool workstation removal tool fm schematic this is in the items file so we're going to go items and then this is a schematic and this is a new one and this is just going to be workstation removal tool schematic there you go. Now we don't. I don't think we need to add a description key for this because I think all schematics share the same description key. So we don't need to worry about that one. We just have to worry about the name key, and that should be fine. Um, so I thought they removed the level gate. I thought they did as well. Again, two five one is actually extremely hard. Yes, it is. So I guess I guess you need millions of XP. Well, actually, from what from what I take, Alpha fifteen took like fifteen million. Uh, Alpha sixteen took like seventeen million or something like that. It was it was like something between like nine and seventeen million, something like that. Then Alpha seventeen was a bit higher, it's like twenty million, and then Alpha eighteen is like six hundred billion. I think it's something like that. Is how much XP you actually need. It's it's a crazy amount of XP at the end. So there's the workstation removal tool schematic, and that will unlock that one. However, there's one other little thing we need to do. You remember in the tool here we have unlocked by. Currently, this will only tell us that salvage operations unlocks it, but we need to add the schematic here as well, just to let the players know that the schematic will also unlock this item. So we're going to go melee tool, um, and then we're going to we can in Notepad at least you can go ahead and just select the whole thing like that. So it, and we'll separate it by a comma. So now we're going to say it's unlocked by the schematic for the item as well as salvage operations. So that's how you can unlock this item. Now all we need to do is add a schematic for the removal kit as well. So we've added one for the tool. Let's go and add one for the removal kit. So let's go and copy this guy and we're going to put you down here. This time I can remove the custom icon tint. We can get rid of that. And I can go ahead and grab the custom icon. It's going to be this now. So we want this to have the same custom icon as resource workstation removal kit. So we're going to change it to this. Oh, no, not one. This one. We're going to change that to this one and let's see that unlocks then the removal tool and then this time instead of unlocking the workstation removal tool we want to un unlock the workstation removal kit and then we just need to change the name of the schematic to workstation removal kit schematic like that and then of course once again we need to localize it so it'll actually show up nicely in game so under these here we can just go uh schematic there so we're going to go resource workstation removal kit fm schematic items again schematic new and this is going to be a workstation removal kit schematic very good so now this schematic will go ahead and unlock the workstation removal kit nice it says i uh, gave it 12 months uh costing then huh? pretty much yeah going deep into one thing in the skill tree is really costly in my experience yes it is going deep in is it will pretty much force you to specialize if you want to go like really deep in for something all right so now we've got that in let's go ahead and just check the schematic sharpen game and they look the way we want okay so let's go into game we're going to come out of our world and we're going to come out of the game completely because we made some localization changes so we have to reset the game completely for all the changes to take effect which is absolutely fine. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll go back into game here. And then once we come in game, let's go continue. And here we go. So now we got that. We can go ahead and see if the schematics are actually there. And if they are, then awesome. If they're not, then well, meh, we'll have to see what we did wrong. Let's go and make sure that our X paths are set correctly. Make sure we get no yellow text coming up about X path issues. Always wanna always wanna test it out. Let's see. Looks good so far. Alright, so now let's go ahead and check that the schematics are in here. So if I just type in to my creative menu, let's go CM for creative mode in the skill tree. And then workstation. Okay, here we go. So currently you can see that the books are open because we already know it. So what we want to do is check these schematics actually unlock the items. So there is actually a really useful um, item, Grandpa's Forgetting Elixir. This will reset your skills. There you go. So you'll forget everything. And now you can see that all my skills are back to zero so this will give you all your points back and put everything back to zero so if you want to respec you can use this which is really useful for testing too so now 
we're going to go ahead and take these schematics each. Um, so we're going to go workstation, remove all schematics. So you can see now that the books are closed. So we've forgotten both these recipes. So let's just double check that the recipes are locked. Okay, they are locked. Excellent. So let's go and read the removal tool. And you can see that unlocks it. Very good. And let's go ahead and use the removal kit. And that unlocked that one too. Excellent. So now you can see that we can go ahead and unlock these via schematics as well, which is really good. So now we don't have to worry about uh, trying to perk into something if we get lucky and finding the schematics, which is good. Anyone else uh, use Max's voice to pass the time and do homework, says Mr. Golden. <laughs> well, that's, that's cool. If, uh, if my voice is homework friendly, that's, that's pretty awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and come out of game then. Now, the other thing we need to do is we've got the schematics now, but we need to actually add those somewhere to be found. Because currently, you can get them in creative menu, but they don't spawn in loot lists and they don't spawn at the traders. So why don't we have a look for the loot lists where the schematics spawn and add those to loot now? So let's go and look for uh, schematic. Um, if I can spell it right. Uh, let's do schemat. There we go. So where does the schematics appear? What loot groups have they got? So group quest schematics, hell recipes. Okay, so these are schematics for mods. So we don't want those ones. I think this is all of them here. Um, these are schematics for rare mods. Okay, these are schematics for rare tools. Okay, here we go. We want to add it to this group. Loot group name is schematics tools rare. So let's go and copy this here. And then in our loot folder, or in our loot document, let's go ahead and make another comment here. So we're going to say, add the schematics for the workstation removal into schematic tools rare group. Okay, so then we're going to do something very similar to what we did up here. We're going to find the loot container who has the name of schematics tools rare, and then we're going to add these items. So remember to add stuff, we use an append. So we're going to go append. So open bracket append x path equals. So we're going to go loot containers, if I can spell it loot containers forward slash loot groups so this will look look for or loot group singular this will look for all the loot groups in the loot containers and then we want the particular loot group that has a name of schematics tools rare there we go and then close it off and of course close our append tag and then we're going to go item name and because we just have this with the word schematic on the end we can pretty much just copy this guy and close it off and add schematic. There you go. So name conventions are really helpful. And then item name equals, and then resource workstation removal kit FM schematic. So we can do this and do that. There you go. So now this will add schematics into anywhere that rare tool schematics can be found, which is really good. The other thing we want to do is make sure that they can be in the traders as well so that we can potentially trade for them if he has them in stock. So let's look at the traders and look for, again, schematic or schemat. That'll, that'll do. Right, so we have farming and cooking recipes. It's not that one. It's going to be one of these, but it's not that one. Uh, schematics for common mods, schematics for common weapons, schematics for electrical common books rare books okay i'm guessing it's gonna be under rare books here okay so what we can do for the trader one is we can add it to rare books i think that's gonna be a good one to do it yeah rare books is the one we want to do it so let's go and copy this guy and we can go from here um uh, let's see let's see so so is anyone else using max's for oh no our bands retraction message i uh, mean skill drink yes uh maybe max had god mode on yes i have god mode on I don't know if that very drink actually killed you. I don't believe it does. I must have I must have run it wrong. No worries, dude. No, I don't I don't I don't think it kills you, I just think it allows you a perk respec. Would be funny if it killed you though. Um be kinda of, be kinda of trolly. <laughs> you forget everything. Um okay. But uh, I think you can die in god mode if you use like a, a self kill command. So now we've gonna go and add this to our trader group. So let's go into our traders file. And again, we're gonna make a uh, little comment here. So in this one, we're gonna go Add the workstation removal schematics to the rare books trader item group. And of course, remember to add stuff, we're going to use an append. So again, we're going to open a bracket, append, xpath equals, and this time, slash traders, slash trader 
item group or well, trader item groups the plural and then trader item actually we can finish that off trader item group and this one we want the name as rare books and then of course we're going to close the append tag so open bracket backslash append and then inside here we're going to go item name equals and then melee tool workstation removal tool fm schematic we don't need to specify a probability for this because they're all the same probability anyway and then item name equals then resource workstation removal kit tool fm schematic and again we don't need to specify any probabilities because i don't believe they are specified in the trader one yep so there are no probabilities specified here so we can pretty much just add all those together and that will then keep the probabilities all the same okay so now the schematics will appear as loot in like places where you would find books and things and they'll appear in the traders under rare books which is awesome so now we have a way to get the schematics in the world as well so we pretty much have everything now to pick up workbenches in the world however we've forgotten something we've forgotten something right we can pick up workbenches but what about chemistry stations what about forges what about table saws what about all those things we can't currently do anything with those because we don't have the blocks in place to be able to do that so why don't we go into our blocks folder and add all the other containers in to be able to pick up the other stuff so here we go let's go ahead and add one so this is going to be um so let's comment and tell everyone what this is so this is a workbench uh workbench container and then you pick this up to get a workbench so we need to do one for the cement mixer no the forge as well so forge container pick this up to get a forge so let's go and comment out all the ones we need to do so we need to do a, a table saw pick this up to get a table saw uh, the saw bench we need one for the cement mixer cement mixer container pick this up to get a cement mixer there we go and lastly the chemistry station chemistry station container pick this up to get a chemistry station there we go so now we've commented these all out um we now can add each of these in so because using comments is a really good way to kind of structure what you need to add and what you need to do and then you can literally just look at the comment to tell you what this entire bit of code does so now you're seeing like the power of comments it's really good nice box so you can take destroyed workbenches and use them in your base not the destroyed ones just the fully functioning ones so what you can do is you can you can take any workbenches that you find in the world and if they're working ones, you can use the removal tool on them to box them up and then pick them up. Destroyed ones, however, you can do that. But we're actually going to be doing something to amend that in a little while. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to make some new blocks as well. Now, one thing we could do is use a property called extends. So instead of having to do all this code again, as you can see, there's lots of this code. Instead of having to do all this again and make everything go huge, we're going to go ahead and do something called extends right so what we can do what extends does let's go ahead and do this so we're going to go add a new property here we're going to go into our forge one we're going to change the name first actually so we're going to say container so cnt for container forge and this is going to be a forge box fm so property this time name and we're going to use extends and then the value of that is going to be um this time instead of uh instead of um typing all this again we can just say we're going to extend from this like that now this is awesome because what that's going to do is it's going to take everything from there and put it into here so essentially what this means is it says take all the properties from here and chuck it in here so extends is like a nice little shortcut that we don't have to so then we don't have to worry about doing all that stuff now the only thing we need to change because the only thing we really need to change is what is picked up and we can change what happens when it's destroyed so the only two properties we really need to readjust and overwrite 
is these ones. So we need to overwrite this one. So instead of getting a workbench, you'll get a forge when you pick it up. And uh, when it's destroyed, you also get a workbench instead. You get a forge as well instead when it's destroyed. So instead of having to copy everything and have really clunky code, you can just do this and you can go forge. So instead of having the workbench now, this will pick up to get us a forge. Now we will have to do the um, the stuff to actually allow the forge to be upgraded. So we'll have to come into here and do one for the forge. But we're going to do that in a minute because I'm going to show you guys something very important in a minute. Uh, why can't the destroyer stations be repaired? I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make that possible very soon. You'll see just how. But for now, let's go ahead and go into game. Oh yeah, we need to localize this, don't we? So we still need to localize it. So let's go into the localization again, which is over here. So now we're going to say, we're going to do one for the forge box. Uh, so it's a block, a container, a new one, and then boxed forge. And then add the description. So as we did before, and then blocks, a container, new and then this is a for forge in a box you can pick this up to retrieve a forge or destroy it or destroy the box to pick up the forge okay so that's localized now let's go ahead and start up the game and let's see what we can do here here we go there you go and our then says, because broken white stations are lootable. Well, you can actually upgrade loot containers. You can do that. It's not recommended you do that, and I've got a better way that I want to work around it. But we'll see. Continue game. And testing world, testing world. Okay, there we go. So we're going to do this. Go back into our testing world. And then we're going to see if this forge box works. Now, we won't be able to upgrade a forge into it yet, because we haven't done that yet. Uh, we haven't done the uh, forge upgrade path. However, we can check if the forge box is going to work. So why don't we go ahead and try that and see what happens. Here we go. Now then says, okay, cool. Uh, Jenningay says, got to take a smoke break or something. Take care all. Thanks for your helpful teaching. No worries, dude. Thank you so much for coming along. Enjoy your smoke break and hopefully we'll see you very soon. So bye for now, dude. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into creative. And let's see if the forge box is now here. Okay, so we got a forge box. Let's just remove everything from inventory that I don't need. And a boxed forge. There we go. So you put this guy down. Now, if I destroy this with... I don't know. Let's get, let's get an axe or something. That'll do. So let me get an axe here. If I destroy this, I should get a forge out of it, right? Let's see what happens. Well, actually, let's, let's pick it up first. Um, oh, I can't because it needs to be repaired now. So yeah, we've got to destroy it. So I destroy it. We should get a forge. However, we have a problem. We get the forge, but we also get the workbench. Dun dun da. Okay, so something is not quite right with the extends. We're going to figure out what that is in just a sec. However, let's go ahead and put down the box and just pick it up. Do we get both the forge and the workbench, or do we just get the forge? Let's see. Pick it up. We just get the forge. Okay, so something is a little bit wrong with this. When you destroy it, you don't just get the workbench. You don't just get the forge. You get the workbench too. And we don't want that to happen because we're getting a free workbench out of that. Now I'm going to tell you why that works. It's a um, it's actually documented in the items, but I know that not everyone's going to see it, so I'm going to explain it and to tell you what happens. Usually, when you go and override items and things like that, let's go into blocks so I can show you this. When you go into blocks and you extend a block, most properties get overwritten when you respecify them. So I've respecified can pick up and value true. So any properties get overwritten. However, drop events do not get overwritten. They get added to. So what this is doing is it's saying overwrite the can pick up with the forge instead of workbench. But then it's not saying overwrite the drop event. It's saying keep the current drop event that you have and also add another drop event for a forge so that's why we're getting essentially inside this whole thing we've got as well as the workbench we've also got this one in here as well so when you extend it doesn't overwrite the drop events it just adds to them now there is a way that we can get around this and doing this is actually very recommended for lots of blocks you have in common we're going to set up a master block 
that contains most of the code for all this, but doesn't specify the can pickup or the drop events. We'll then specify them in the other blocks that we extend from. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and copy this, and we're going to go and make a comment here, and we're going to call it master uh, container. And this is going to be, we're going to call it, um, we're going to call it master box. Um, or master workstation. Actually, we'll call it workstation. Let's let's name it something better. Workstation box master FM. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all the properties that we had before, but we're not going to include this one, and we're not going to include this one. Now what we can do is instead of uh, this one extending from here we can extend this one from here that doesn't have a drop event specified. And then because there's nothing for it to add to, it can go ahead and just give us the thing we want. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to add an extends property to this guy. So we're going to go property name equals extends and value. And then that's going to be the master one. And then because it extends this, we don't need to have all of this stuff in here. Um, so we don't have to have all of this stuff here because the only things we really need to overwrite is picking up and the destroy event. Those are the only things we need to add and overwrite, which is fine. So let's go ahead and get rid of those and let's see if this works. So now this extends this and then we also have to make sure this one also extends the master block as well. So now what should happen is this has most of the stuff written into it. We also, just to be on the safe side, we have to add a blank drop event as well. So we're going to go drop event equals destroy uh, name equals, and then we're just going to leave this as resource wood. As let's go leave it as resource paper, but then we're going to have a count of zero. So this gives you nothing when destroyed, but you have to add, you have to add some kind of blank one because otherwise I believe it throws you errors. So the first one we're going to have a blank destroy event. So although this will add these two destroy events together, because I've specified no paper is going to be giving you, it won't overwrite anything and make weird things happen. So now we should be able to just extend all of our workstations from this, and this will make things much easier to manage in the long run. So say if we want to change like the texture for this box. Um, it will then affect all the ones that extend from it. Say if we wanted to um, change the shape of it, it will apply to all of it. Say if we wanted to change the material, it will apply to that too. So it's pretty good now. So we can extend, we can just like extend all these without having to write this entire load of code again. Just have to be careful with the destroy events, which is why setting up a master block is the way around it. So let's go and do it for everything else. So let's go ahead and do, we done it for the forge. Let's go for the table saw. So let's go and look for the um, table saw in the blocks XML so I can see what it's called. So table saw, here we go. So it's block name equals table saw. There you go. So that's that's literally all it is. So for the table saw one, we can go ahead and go into our blocks. Oh wait, that's Luke. Where's our blocks one? Here. We can go to our blocks one and then we can call this container table saw box. And then that extends from here, and then we literally just need to change those two to table saw. See? How easy is that? And we can add these things now really, really quickly. So there's the table saw. We can add the cement mixer. So let's go and just check what the cement mixer is. I think it's just uh, underscore or a uh, lowercase cement mixer. Uh, extends value cement mixer. Yep, so that's the uh, that's the one there. Apart from description key, craft sound, and craft complete sound. Okay, so we'll go ahead and grab this. And then we can just replace this with, instead of table saw, we can just say cement mixer. And then we can put this guy into there. There you go. And that's the uh, that's the cement mixer one done. And then, last but not least, we do it for the chemistry station. There we go. So I have to localize all these in a minute, but that's okay. Uh, let's see, chemistry, let's just type in chem, let's see, uh, hang on, let's do chemist, there you go, workstation busted, probably this one, isn't it, chemistry station, 
There you go. Yep, it's just chemistry station with a lowercase c. So copy this one. And then we can go ahead and do it in here. So we can do... Uh, so cement mixer, we're going to do chemistry station box. And then we're going to change those values just to be chemistry station and chemistry station. There you go. So that's all of the blocks in straight away. Um, so this makes a null, makes a null default. Okay, so let's go and do that. So that's all of our workstations in that now extend from this one master container. The other thing we need to do is um, make the changes to the existing workstations. So let's go ahead and grab all these. We're going to copy these five times over. One, two, or four times. So we have five of them. And then we just need to change the name of the... We just need to change the name of the station and the box that it upgrades to. So we've got the forge one. So this one is going to upgrade into, so here we're going to change this to forge and this will upgrade into the forge box. And then this one is going to be the uh, table saw. And then we can turn that one into the, the table saw box. There you go. So there's the forge, the table saw. Then we're going to have the cement mixer. And that's going to be, turn into the cement mixer box. Uh, actually, we've got to do CNT cement mixer box. Yep, that's the first one. And lastly, we do the chemistry station. So chemistry station, that then upgrades into the chemistry station box. So container, chemistry station box. And there we go. So there's all the boxes and all the upgrades. So just like that, very, very quickly, by doing a master block, we managed to specify all these by default. Nice. So let's go ahead and see what we have now. So the next thing we need to do is localize it all. So we can go ahead and do container table saw box. So that's going to be a blocks container new. And this is going to be boxed table saw. And then container table saw box description. Blocks container new. And this is a table saw in a box. You can pick this up to retrieve a table saw or destroy it or destroy the box to pick. Up the table saw. There you go, so there's the third one. Then we just have to do it for the fourth and the fifth one. So then we're going to do a container uh, cement mixer. Uh, okay, once again, blocks container new, and this is a boxed cement mixer. And then we're going to go and add that in again for the description blocks container new and then this is a cement mixer in a box you can pick this up to retrieve a cement mixer or destroy the box to pick up the cement mixer there you go and then we just gotta do one more for the chemistry station and that's it so container chemistry station box fm and then once again blocks container kd nand uh, wait no not kd nand new and this is a uh, chemistry station in the box you can pick this up to retrieve if i can spell it right a chemistry station or destroy the box to pick up the chemistry station. There you go. I wish it was like um, localization overrides as well, so you didn't have to repeat yourself so many times. Okay, so now all the workbenches should upgrade into the stuff that they're meant to. So let's go ahead and try it, shall we? So now let us go into our game. There we go. And let's see what we can do here. So next, we're going to go continue. 
pop into the world and let's see if this all works now. So there's a couple of things we have to test. First thing we have to test is whether we have any XPath issues. So let's go and check in the check in here for yellow XPathy text. I think that's fine. No issues on loading in the world. Everything's initializing just fine, so we'll just get shader issues again, I guess. Yep, just some random shader issues. Okay, so that's all fine. Let it kind of pop in the world. Right, let's go and get one of each workstation. So let's go and do creator mode. You and then let's get our workstation removal tool, our workstation removal kit. Uh, so get all five of those. And there is the. Let's type in box and see if these all show up. Okay, so workbench, forge, table saw, cement mixer. Hang on, one of those is not correct. So let's just type CMT. Let's actually type FM because this will show all the boxes here. Uh, so you've got a workbench, a forge, um, where's his, that's the master one, table saw, cement mixer. Ah, hang on, I've uh, done something a little bit wrong here in localization. So you can see that's actually had the whole description there. Um, I need to add... So it's, you know, I didn't add the chemistry station one by default, did I? So we need to do... I had to add desk onto the end of that. So that's uh, not dex, desk, if I can do it right, there we go, and then we have to do this one. So blocks, container, new, and this is a boxed chemistry station. There we go, right, let's go and close out the game and load it in, just make sure that works. So, ooh, don't pin it, and close it, go on, close, close the app, you fool. Okay, hang on a second, I have frozen. For some reason. Okay, let me just go task manager and exit it that way. Much easier. Kill the process. Die. There you go. Haha! -ha. I escaped you. And now we can go ahead and open this up. In Steam again, and let's see if this fixed it. I think that should fix it. There we go. And uh, Manga Puma, welcome to the stream. He says, hello, how you doing, dude? And Little Taz, welcome to the stream as well. He says, uh, hello, survivors, how are you guys doing? Thank you guys so much for popping in. Uh, the destroyed workstations can be taken apart with a wrench if you don't want it to respawn the tin them apart if you need the mats off them. Yep, this is true. Um, however, we're going to make it so that you get some special parts off it. So, testing well, back into here. Didn't get x errors before, and I've not made any x changes, so I don't have to watch out for that this time. Just localization changes, and that is it. So let me go into creative, and let's see if we do that now. And David Scott, welcome to the stream, dude. How you doing? So Fox types lots of words and does stuff. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Fox types lots of words and does stuff. It's like Tyrion Lannister. I drink and I know things. I'm just like I mod and I type stuff. Right. So let's go ahead now and see if this works. So if I type boxed. There we go, now they all appear. So there's all the box stuff. So we're going to get a workbench. Actually, wait, we have a workbench in the forge already. So we can put those down. And then we want to... Let's just drop that. Uh, so we need a cement mixer. A chemistry station. And we need, last but not least, a table saw. There you go. Uh, table saw, here we go. So let's go ahead and equip this guy. Put you guys in there. Okay, so grab these. Onto my hotbar, you can stay in here. Two, three, four, five. There you go. Alright, so let's place each of these down. Actually, let's get ten of these so I can double check things. Um, so I need one more set of workstation removal kits. There we go, so grab five more, and let's see, so we'll place this down. Right, so now can we upgrade this into a forge box? Let's see. Haha! -ha. And this allows us to pick up a forge, so if I pick it up, I get a forge. Brilliant. Let's put it down again, and just check if I destroy it, I get a forge as well. Let's get an axe to destroy it quickly. Nice steel one. That'll do. Okay, so I'll upgrade it once again. Now, do I just get a forge if I destroy it? Let's see. Yes, I do. There we go. So that works perfectly. 
There's the mod that there, uh, there's the mod for a junk turret. And Wicked Wookie says, Hey guys, sorry this is a bit off topic. How the heck do you make steel spear parts? Found the schematic. Um let's see. Steel spear the steel spear parts, I believe, you, the only way you can do that is to take an existing steel spear and scrap it. I think that's how you do it, because the parts um, are found by scrapping the associated item. So if I get a spear here, a steel one, if I go and scrap this guy, you'll see that right there, I get from that the steel spear parts. So scrapping it will give you three. So that's how you get it. You have to find existing steel spears in the world and then scrap, scrap it to get the parts. And yeah, so scrap the seal spheres. There you go. Um, so let's go ahead and try the other way. So the forge works just fine. Let's see. Can we pick up a workbench? This should work just fine. Okay, so we go ahead and pick this up. There we go. And then we can go ahead and put you down again. So picking up gives us the workbench as well. Does destroying give us the workbench? Let's see. Destroying does. Okay, so that works perfectly too. So cement mixer. So can we box it up and then pick it up? Yes, we can. Oh, don't want to be down. Okay, you can go there. Oh, and we need more workstation removal kits, don't we? Why not letting me upgrade you? Oh wait, I got the schematics. That's why. <laughs> like I say, oops, we have a we have a bug. Um, okay, so removal. So workstation removal kit. There you go. Want some more of those? Safe. So if I destroy this box, do I get a cement mixer? Yes, I do. So three out of five is working good. So pick this up, do I get a chem station? Yes, I do. And then let's go and wreck this thing. Yes, I get my chem station, very good. And then lastly, we have the table saw. Let's go and test that last one. So then I can pick the guy up. That works just fine. And place it down once again and destroy the box just to check it works. If I did it right, it should work absolutely perfectly. There we go, pick it up and I get a table saw back. There we go, so I got all my workstations back effortlessly. So now whenever you find a fully working workstation in the world, you can upgrade it and take it. That is awesome. Um, let's see, and let's see. Fernando, welcome to the stream, it says uh, Algon BR. I don't know what you mean by Elgin BR dude, but welcome to the stream. How you doing? Uh, says I also want a truck with rotating blades on the front to hamburgerize zombies. That'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be uh, that'd be a vehicle modeler. You want to talk to uh, want to talk to Guppy about that? He'd probably be able to do it. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and get this. Pick up the weapon just to confirm that I get all my stations back. And yes, I do. So you can see we've got all of our workstations back from placing down. So that means any we find in the world, we can now go ahead and pick up, which is awesome. There we go. Uh, let's see. So there we go. A little test is Guffy. Okay. Yes, Guffy is. Um, you you pretty much see him everywhere on the Seven Days to Die forums. He's like the most frequent poster on the forums. He made the vehicle overhaul. He made a couple of other modelets as well for A17. Actually, quite a few. So. If you want to go and talk to him about vehicles, um, he might be able to. Uh, he might be able to have something like that. He might already even have one. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, but yeah, Gu Guppy will have uh, everything you need. Guppy carries the full name. But yeah, he'll have everything you need. Um, okay, so let's come out of there. Now that works really, really well, which is awesome. Now the other thing we want to do is add um, a couple of other things in which is going to allow us to take broken workstations and upgrade them. So this is doing pretty well on my hand. How much time do I got? Do I have enough time to do this? Might have enough time to do this. It shouldn't take me too long. Uh, spears. OK, then there is a floor. If you have a forge, a workbench, and a recipe schematic, you should be able to make spears. Yeah, you should be, you should be able to make the parts. I, I see why that why that's considered the floor. You should be able to. But I think they only want you to be able to like go out and get them that way. But it would be nice if you could make them as well. But currently, you can't. You literally have to loot for them and scrap things um, to get to it. Um, so yeah, there is uh, there is that. It kind of forces you into looting for the best gear. But then again, you can only, you can only um, loot the top quality ones anyway. You can only make up to tier five, but you can loot up to tier six. So that's another thing as well. Um, so looting is definitely more emphasized. Okay, so we've got to, got ahead and done that. Why don't we go ahead and make a um, a new item? 
which is going to allow you to harvest destroyed workstations and those items will then allow you to upgrade other destroyed workstations into fully working ones. I think that's going to be a pretty good idea. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we've got workstation removal kits. We're going to go ahead and make, um, we're going to say workstation upgrade items. These will drop from destroyed workstations and allow you to upgrade other ones. So you still have to you still have to take down some of the destroyed workstations, but then if you get enough of those items and find another destroyed workstation, you can upgrade it into something. So by the way, survivors, I did get Hydra's mod to load. Okay, and loader. It's been a tough fight so far um, with the Horde's challenge. He does have construction chains of improvement that need to be learned. Oh wow, nice. <laughs> and then he says, "Wow, great idea." Uh, says if you have it too easy, then you wouldn't really want. To, would you really want to play the game anymore? Yeah, they did make it hard for a reason. It says, question, how do I add the blimp to the game, or is that a block in the game anymore? Um, to add the blimp, you would go into, I believe it's in Entity Classes. Uh, let's see. Do they still have it in here? Let's see. Uh, yeah, Vehicle Joping kind of sort of works, but it's buggy, and we don't have time for that. So all you have to do is copy... You can either uncomment it in your base file, or if you want to add it as a modlet, what you would do is you would go, you do something like this. Let me let me grab this for you. I'm gonna I'm gonna Discord this one to you, um, because you'll need to. This this one's probably too long for anything like that. Let me go in Discord real quick. So let me quickly go into Discord, and I will send this one to you, Unforgiven, as well. So what you can do is there you are right there. Um, you can go ahead and do, um, let me just do three lines for this, and then go append xpath equals entity classes. There you go. Okay, so yeah, I'll do this for you real quick so you can see it. Uh, append xpath entity classes, and then append and then you want to just chuck that in there. I think that'll work. There you go, try that. That might work for you. <laughs> okay, let's come out of that. Uh, so, yeah, saying stream mode is active, be safe. Haha. <laughs> says, uh, did not Manmore have a balloon blimp in one of his videos? Yes, he did. They just disabled it. Um, so, uh, Manga says, I mostly blacksmith stuff. That'd be so fun. Um, Let's see. So, so, oh, the admin blimp. That was pretty fun to play. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really funny though because you could destroy it really easily as well. So yeah, um, Unforgiven, you need to put this into your entity classes. Um, you need to make an entity classes thing in your modeler and put it into that. So you need to use the appendix path and put that in. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here now for removal class. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy. Um, we're gonna copy this. We're gonna make five of these, five of these items. Okay. So we're gonna do. Actually, we're going to have a base class, so we're going to have resource workstation. Um, I'm going to call it workstation salvaged parts master. FM. Okay, so then that's the workstation removal kit. Uh, workstation removal kit schematic. Okay, hang on a second. Workstation removal kit. Okay, we don't need this second one because we already got one in there, I think. Yeah, Western Remote Kit. Yeah, those, that one was copied twice. Okay, so this is going to be... Um, Perks have operations. This doesn't need an unlocked buy. We can take that out. Economic value we can change to 50. There we go. End resource iron fragment. Okay, that'll do. So then what we're going to do... So this is going to be a master block. Oh, and there's also a way to prevent the master blocks from showing up in creative mode. I will show you that right now as well, because that's actually pretty important if you don't want those to be seen. So if I go into blocks here... Um, this master block, for example, I don't want to show in creative mode. All I've got to do is go property name equals creative mode, and then value equals none, with a capital N. Now, this does not get overwritten by extends. So when you extend stuff, uh, extends does not take this one and put it 
to all of these other ones either. So extends will ignore creative mode options. So that's a really good thing to bear in mind too. So you don't have to set creative mode in everyone. I saw the play the game without lagging crashing, says Manga Puma. Um, there was something that one time, I'm not sure what they, uh, what they did. I think they dropped it. Yeah, I think, I think they just removed it. Um, cause it was, it was just meant to be like a, a jokey thing. So yeah, that will take, um, this and have it not display in creative mode, which is what I want. And then we're going to go into these items and make my master item not show up in there either. So I don't want you in creative mode at all. So we can just remove it from there. And then we can just go item name equals, and then we can extend from here. So we can just go resource. Uh, workbench, um, workbench parts, FM, and then we can just say extends. So we can go property name equals extends, and then value is going to be uh, resource workstation salvage fast master. There we go. Awesome. And then we just have to make five of these. So that's for the workbench. We need to do for the table. I th actually, I don't think t destroyed table source exists. So we only need to do this for four of them. So we need to do the workbench, the forge, the cement mixer, and the chemistry station. So yeah, that should be fine. So let's change the first one to... second one could be forge. So resource forge parts. We can then go change that one to uh, table saw. Oh no, uh, cement mixer. And then we can do this one and turn that into chemistry station. There we go. And then we have to localize all those. Um, I'm also going to give this a common description key. Um, so what we're going to do this time, instead of having to do a description for each one, we're going to put it into a description key. So there's no, no destroyed, no destroyed table source. Yeah, I haven't seen any of them. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to go property in the master one, we're going to go property name equals description key. The value for this is going to be, um, we're going to say salvaged parts group description. Now what we can do then is anything that extends from this will share the same description. So all we have to do now is specify the description once for each of these, and then all of these things will have it. So instead of having to do it like four times in the file, we just do it once, which is really good. So let me show you how this works, right? So let's go ahead and copy this one, and we're going to make some localization for this. So resource workbench parts, let's see, let's put them, let's put them here in the items area. So we're going to have resource workbench parts, FM, and that's going to be items, resources, and that's going to be new. And then we're going to have salvaged workbench parts. And then we're going to have resource uh, uh, forge parts. And then items, uh, resources new and salvaged forge parts then same next one resource uh, cement mixer parts items resources uh, new and it's going to be salvaged cement mixer parts And then resource chemistry station parts and uh, items resources new salvaged chemistry station parts. There you go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a description for all of them using one thing. I like to add that the fishing one on the server was pretty fun to do. Oh yeah, fishing ones is pretty awesome. Uh, Kay says, uh, what are you making now? Uh, I'm now making the destroyed workbenches able to be upgraded with parts you salvage from other destroyed workbenches, which is pretty nice. Um, so let's go ahead and do um, copy this one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy, and this is for the group description for all of these. So all of these will now have this description. Um, so the description for this is going to be items, resources, new, 
and then we're going to say um, salvaged workstation parts can be used to upgrade any destroyed workstation of the same name into a fully working one. Cool. OK, so now we've got that sorted. That is awesome. So now we have the webbage parts, the forge, the cement mixer, and the chemistry station. Now we're going to give these some custom icons. Again, I'm going to try and keep this lightweight. So I'm not going to go ahead and make my own custom icons for this. We're going to go ahead and just do um, some custom icons on the end of this. And then we'll tint them different colors. So property name equals custom icon value. And that's going to be resource. Actually, we're just going to say workbench. So this will give it the same icon as the actual workbench has, but then we're going to go and I'm going to do the same for this one. So property name equals custom icon and then value is going to be forge. And then for this one, we're going to give it the chemistry, the uh, cement mixer one property name equals custom icon value equals a cement mixer and last but not least the chemistry station because this will say we have to make an icon for each and every one property name equals custom uh, not cut some icon custom icon and then value is going to be for that one chemistry station so just the name of the blocks as they appear in the xml we can do that uh it says uh, find worms while digging is pretty rare this was true, yeah, that was um, because fishing was part of starvation, right? So yeah, I, I remember finding it was pretty rare. So now what we want to do is we want to tint all these icons. What I could do is add a custom icon tint to each of these things. But why don't I just save myself the trouble and do it once up here? Because everything extends from this anyway. So we can go property name equals custom icon tint. And then value is going to be. And then we can do RGB. So we can do R is double F. So let's just make it red, but then let's make it a little bit of a darker red. So let's go um, A9. There we go. So A9 should be a good darkish red. So now these items will just appear as um, the resources that they that they are, or like the thing that they are. So that should make things a lot easier. So now what we're going to do is we need to... Uh, one thing I want to see if I can do is put a little icon over the top of it as well. Um, so let's have a look for... Schematic no quality master. Where is that? Uh, let's go. Uh, name equals schematic. No, schematic no quality master. Okay, schematic master. Here we go. So item type icon equals black. Okay, so the item type icon. I think we can. Um, uh, alternate item type icon is book red custom icon. So yeah, item type icon. I think we can use to overlay um, an icon over the top of it which is going to be pretty good. So I don't know what, um, I think that's going to be UI game symbol or something like that. So why don't we grab this guy and we're going to add this to the master one. So in our items XML here, because item type, I, item type icon will put an overlay onto it for us. Um, so it could be a book, but we could turn it into, um, What's the icon used for the salvage operations? We can find that in here. So for salvage operations, um, the icon is UI game symbol scrap. So let's go ahead and grab this because I don't think we need to put UI game symbol on it. We can just do scrap and we'll see if that works. So icon is scrap. There we go. So that should now add a little icon over the top of it to help distinguish it as a different part. I'm going to say, will you be playing later this afternoon? Probably not. Uh, probably not later this afternoon. Um, I'm going to. I'm going to pretty much wait till another experimental build comes up before I start another game. Um, so probably going to wait a little bit for that. Okay. So now the upgrade parts are in the game. Let's go ahead and just check that they are actually there. So let's go and do that. So let's go into seven days. Start it up again. And let's see if this works. And Unforgiven says uh, the fishing model has been updated to 18 already. It's on the forums. However, you need to add localization into your localization for it to work properly. Okay. Does the localization not get pushed forward then? 
I thought now in A18 you could um, push the localization forward um, automatically, because it does for most modelers, so unless DMT is having issues with it. Not too sure. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So, initializing world, creating player, here we go. Okay. So now, let's go and see. Uh, salvaged. There we go. Oh, look at that. There we go. So you can see now we've got salvaged workbench parts, salvaged forge parts. Look at that. Salvaged cement mixer parts. And that even has the salvage operation stuff over the top of it. See that little overlay there? That is awesome. And we have salvaged chem station, uh, chemistry station parts. Look at that. And you can see they all share that description because we specified the description key in the master block that we uh, that we specified before. So now we can go ahead and see if we can make these usable in game as well. Awesome. So I just uh, CVD it into localization just to be safe. I don't think so. No, I'm not sure. Okay, I'll have to. We'll have to have a look at that. Then. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty good. So now we can pretty much get these parts from the stuff. And if Fun Pimps update their icons and stuff, we don't have to worry about this model at breaking um, with new icon textures, etc. So now we can go ahead and harvest workbenches for these parts. But I actually have to add that in. So let's go ahead and see if we can add those things in now. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to go to the blocks file. And now we need to add some destroy events to the non-working ones. So let's go ahead and come down here. Uh, let's go and come take this append out here. Right, let's come right down here. And then we're going to make another comment here. Uh, adds uh, drops. Uh, add salvage parts as drops to destroyed workstations of the associated type. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to do next. So let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So some servers should have that fishing on there. That's cool. Nice. Yeah, the fishing model sounds pretty cool. Okay, so let's go and do that. So next thing then is we're going to go ahead and again do some appends, but this time we're going to add new drop events to each one. So let's go ahead and look at... Um, Let's look at blocks here. So we want CMT and then destroyed, I believe is the name we need to look for. Um, let's see. Oh, it's collapsed. Okay. So container collapsed. We should find the generator bank, the solar bank, the battery bank, the forge, the workbench, the cement mixer, the chemistry station. Okay, so I guess we could do the, the ones for the uh, generator banks and stuff like that as well, but I'll worry about that later. Let's just do the ones that are the most important. So let's do the workbench one first, because that's the one we started with. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new drop event to this. So as you can see, we've got the harvest ones, and this time instead of a destroy drop event, we're going to add a new harvest drop event to this. So what we could do is we could add we could add it so that the drop event comes onto here. So we could add the drop event like here, and that'd be using um, using an appendix path. Or just to make the code look a little bit neater, what we could do is we could add it here using a new one called insert after. So it depends. If we want to add it to the end, it won't make a difference where we add it, but sometimes it's nicer to keep the code looking nice because you can actually get a dump of the XMLs as well just to check things too. So I think we're going to explore some insert after XPath instead, just so you guys can see how that works. It's very similar to um, append, but you need to go one level deeper for it to have the same effect. So let's go ahead and check that out. So let's go into blocks now. And this time, instead of using an append, we're going to use an insert after. So we're going to go insert after with a capital A, xpath right this time we want to find in the blocks we want to find the block whose name equals collapsed workbench there we go and then we want to insert it we what we want to do is we want to find the drop we want to find the last drop event now there is a little bit of an issue right so let me let me kind of show you what the issue could be um, if we go into this blocks file you'll see that 
this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has eight drop events, right? Which is okay, but you know, some of them might have less drop events. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. This one only has seven, for example, you see? So each of these has a different amount of drop events. Now the problem is if you use like like we did with the effect group, we said effect group one or effect group two, if you did that with um, the drop events right here you would never know for sure which one is the last one to insert after it. So what we want to do is we want to insert another drop event after the last one in each category. Now to do that, there is actually a little handy XPath function you can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to, in our XPath, we're going to say the drop. So we're going to look for the drop events and we're going to say Instead of like using a number, like, hang on, let me move this out of the way so you can see it. Instead of using like a number, like two or three or seven or six, we can just go last and brackets. And this is a function which will find the last one in the sequence. So now you never have to worry about which is the last one. You can go ahead and find it like that. Um, so Manga says, well, friends, here I have to go here. She'll drive me up the wall till I get off the laptop and go hang out. Let it all keep the great work up. No worries, dude. Thank you so much for coming along and hope to see you very soon. Welcome Kit Morrison to the stream, dude. How you doing? And says, which code should I use to change the gyrocopter gasoline consumption? Uh, you need to go into vehicles XML to do that. So let me see. In vehicles, you should find the gyrocopter in here, and that will show you um, the gas it uses. So here you go. Um, so the first one is the gyrocopter, vehicle gyrocopter. So you've got this sets like the camera distance, uh, the tilt angles and things like that, up force. Uh, you can set maximum speeds and things like that, the horn sound, uh, the engine, slot type engine, uh, fuel kilometer per liter okay so yeah i think if you increase this um you can go ahead and you, you can increase this one to go ahead and do that so you'd use a set attribute xpath on here so you do um the xpath you'd use i'll put it up here and then i'll copy it into the chat for you so you're going to do this so in a in your own modelet, you're going to make a vehicles.xml file and then you're going to go set attribute and then we're going to have the xpath and we're going to have a name so set attribute has two parameters. And then the X path is going to be vehicles. So you do slash vehicles and then vehicle. And then we want the one who, which is called gyrocopter. So whose name equals vehicle gyrocopter. And then within here, we want to find the property class of engine. So we're going to do uh, property class equals and then let's just make sure it's engine let's see here we go so property class equals engine let me get rid of this uh, thing over there so then in that property class we want to select the property whose name is fuel kilometer per liter so then we're going to do another forward slash and go property whose name equals uh, fuel kilometer per liter and then the name of the attribute that we want to alter is value so the attribute that you want to change is value so you'll change value here and then you'll change that so by default it's 0 0.15 I think if you set it higher so maybe like 0 0.3 you'll half the amount of fuel you use per kilometer um, I think that's what it is. Uh, fuel kilometer per liter. So it says now you travel 0 0.3 kilometers per liter of fuel that you use. I think that's what it means. So let me go and copy this for you, and I'll go ahead and chuck that into the into the YouTube chat here. Hang on a second. Uh, wait a second. Where is my YouTube chat? YouTube chat. Where are you? There you are. In here. In here. There you go. I'll copy this in for you right there. One, two, three. Done. Hopefully that works. Um, yep, that should be short enough for the YouTube to go on. Nice. Um, okay, so we have. I think says, "Wow, you're still streaming." Nice. I wanted to see something. Um, I wanted to see something with a video. Uh, will the video be up later? Yes, it will. Um, Fernando says, "I'm doing a mod. I need the code to set a new value on gyrocopter gasoline consumption." Could you teach me? Uh, could you teach me my code is going wrong? We'll try that one and see if that works for you. So you need to create a vehicles XML file um, and then put that in in between two configs tags, and that should work. Um, so try that. Let's go ahead and just remove that so I don't have anything to worry about. But yeah, that's what, that's what you would do. Maybe give that a try and see if that works for you. 
Um, okay, so let's go and continue from where we left off. So we were here. So we were going to do insert after the workbench, and we want to insert another drop event after the last one. And of course, we need to close our insert after tags. Okay, and now we're going to add a new drop event. We're going to say drop, uh, not crop, drop event equals harvest. So as we're harvesting it, we're going to go ahead and do, let's go and look at a previous drop event so we can see how it's structured. We're going to say the name of the resource we want. So this is going to be pretty simple. We're going to go name equals, and then we can select the resource we want, resource uh, workbench parts here. So the resource we want is this. And then we can then, after that, say the next property, I believe, is how many we want to get from it. So let's see, harvest, uh, the count. So yeah, the count is going to be something, and then tags equals salvage harvest. OK, so actually tags, I think we can use disassemble. Um, or can we? Oh, no, disassemble is just to make it um, pay the wrench. OK, so I'm going to use forged iron. Yes, yeah, so a resource. Harvest, the resource you want, how many, and then the tag. Okay, so the count is going to be, let's say three, and then the tags equals salvage harvest. Is it singular or plural for tags? It is a singular, so you can only have one tag. So we're going to have tag equals salvage harvest. So what this means is if you're using a wrench, and the or the item you're using to harvest it has the salvage harvest tag, you will then go ahead and get three workbench parts from a destroyed workbench. And that's pretty much it. That's all that's all we have to do. So then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for the other ones. So we're gonna do insert after X path equals blocks. And then we want to find the block whose name is container collapsed forge. Okay, and then insert this after the last drop. There we go. And then insert after. And then this time we want to do the different parts. It says, I just tried to learn some new things. I see it already just did it in less than two minutes. Great work, Max. Thank you, dude. Um, and Fernando says, thanks. No worries, dude. That's awesome. Glad I hope that helps you out, though. Um, and so KB is here as well. How are you doing again, KB? Um, so let's go ahead and copy this drop event. So let's typing it out again. So the drop event is going to be harvest. And this time we're going to have resource forge parts. And then we get three from those. Let's copy the entire thingy over here. And then we're going to do, instead of Collapse Forge, we're going to have Collapse Cement Mixer. And then that's going to be Cement Mixer Parts. And then we can do the Collapsed Chemistry Station. We can do the Collapsed Chemistry Station, and that's going to be Chemistry Station Parts. Nice. Okay, so that's going to add in all of the stuff for destroyed workstations. So if we find a destroyed workstation in the world, when we harvest it with a wrench, we'll get three of those parts. I think that's pretty good. Um, it says destroyed workstations. I see they're in two. Okay, cool. So that works. So now let's go in game, and we're going to see if this works. So it's popping game here. Uh, oh, I didn't want to show the game launcher. Um, Hang on, let me come out of that. Do not show the launcher, thank you very much. I just want to play the game. There we go. And let's see here. So now we'll put down some destroyed workstations and see when we wrench it if we get some stuff out of it. So let's have a look here. Hopefully we do, which will be awesome source. Let's see, hopefully we don't get X-Path errors, let's just double check as we load in the world. So you got some configs missing, but other than that, everything's fine. Uh, oh, what was that? That one there, was that an X-Path error, or was it just a breadcrumb? 
that was a breadcrumb and everything else is fine okay so let's go ahead and get the collapsed workstations and test this so let's go into creative let's go collapsed uh oh they're dev blocks maybe, maybe they're dev blocks there you go so we got a destroyed workbench so there we go so grab all these and let's go ahead and dump these things in here don't need any of those right so let's put one of these down each and then we're gonna get, gonna get a wrench uh, let's see if this works so we're gonna get a wrench all right one wrench and let's place this down and then once you wrench this apart let's see if we get let's see if we get it we might do let's uh, let's have a look there we go as you can see we're wrenching the forge and we're getting forged parts, look at that. So we should, in total, get three. Once we take this. Let's verify that this gives us three parts. So far we have one. Let's see if we get another. There's two. Let's see if we get three. Hopefully we do. And there is three. There you go. So from destroying that forge, we get three parts by using a wrench on it. Look at that. So now we can take those parts from destroyed workstations. To change the range of the sledgehammer, do I use to, do I have to use set attribute? Yes, you can use set attribute to do that. Uh, nice. I think it would just be a recipe. Okay, this so is how many parts does it take to make one though? Well, what we're going to do is um, it's going to be then when you find another one of the same type. So say you take one destroyed workstation part. If you then go and find another one in the world, you'll be able to use those parts to upgrade it. And I think we should have it to say six parts to upgrade it so you get three if you find two destroyed workstations and take them apart you then have and then you find a third one those six you can then use to upgrade i think that's a fair trade so let's go and check the workbench see if we get workbench parts there's one which is awesome so there's one workbench part straight away there's two and there should be three let's see there you go, three workbench parts. So those two work just fine. Let's go ahead and do the cement mixer. Double check that one. Let's see what we get out of here. There's one. There is two. Very good. And there is three. Nice, so three cement mixer parts. And finally, chem station. Let's just double check that one. So destroy chem station should give me some destroyed chemistry station parts. Here we go. There's one. Make sure it's giving us all the right pieces. Here's two. There you go. And three. There we go. So now we've got all of those workstation parts straight back. Look at that. So now here is all our salvage parts that we managed to collect. So that works absolutely fine. Awesome. So now the last thing we have to do is enable us to use the items that we obtain from these things to then upgrade those things so when we collect destroyed workbench parts we can then use or salvage workbench parts we can then use those to upgrade another destroyed workstation that we find in the world so i think that's what we're going to do so last thing we need to do then is we need to add another upgrade path so we're going to use once again upgrade blocks so this we can just use appendix parts here so we're going to do one more comment down here and this one is going to be to allow the salvage parts to be used to upgrade a workstation of the same type. Okay, so now what we can do is we can do, so this is our code here. So we can just change the append to x path. So instead of the block name being the chemistry station, we can just say block name equals container collapsed workbench there we go and then we're going to upgrade it to the workbench using resource workbench parts and it's going to take six of them and then let's say this takes 12 hits to upgrade. So it's going to take quite a bit to upgrade it, take a little bit of work, but you use six of those parts, two hits each pretty much, and then you upgrade it into a workbench. So now the destroyed workbench can now be upgraded into 
a regular workbench, just like that. See? Easy. Uh, I think AC will be busy tonight, says so KV. I'm sure he will. So we're going to do three more of these. So that's that one's for the workbench. Let's go and give myself a little bit of room here. So we're going to do one for the forge. So container collapsed forge. There we go. And that's going to upgrade it into a forge using forge parts. Very good. Now we could do this one for the cement mixer. Very good. And then change that to cement mixer. And change that to cement mixer. See? Naming conventions is awesome. And last but not least, to chemistry station. So we got the container collapsed chemistry station. There we go. That's going to be chemistry station. And that is going to be resource chemistry station parts. Take six. There we go. So now all these guys can now use the salvage parts to upgrade into their final blocks. However, there is one thing that we are forgetting to do. You remember that the when we specified the item to do upgrades with, like this melee tool workstation removal tool, we had to specify allowed upgrade items. So on here, you'll see that down here somewhere, where are you? Allowed upgrade items. I think you're on actions, action one. Yeah, so allowed upgrade items, you have to specify what items you're allowed to use to upgrade. What we need to do is to any tools that exist already, we need to add those upgrade items to the tools because otherwise we're going to have uh, we're going to have some issues. Now this is going to be using uh, an append in a slightly different way. So let me go and show you what we're going to do. So let's go and make a comment down here. So there's all our new items and now what we want to do is we want to allow the stone axe, claw hammer and nail gun to upgrade destroyed workstations. So this is going to add the allowed upgrade items to those things. So, so, no, so you're upgrade. So, no, so you're upgrading it. Yep, there we go. And and says AC says, yeah, I will be. All right, so let's go ahead and do that next. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to use an append xpath. So we're going to go append xpath, and then we're going to this time we're going to look for the item whose name equals melee tool stone axe like that. Okay, so we can do that. And then what we want to do is we want to find the property class equals action one. So for the right click, and then we want property whose name equals allowed upgrade items. There we go. And then we're going to stick our append closing tag right here. There's a main, there's a reason I'm doing this because when we're appending directly inside a tag, we have to, uh, we have to close it. Now there's one other thing I need to do. We need to append it, not to the tag, but to the attribute inside the tag. Now you can't use set attribute to do this. You have to do this with an append. So what you need to do is you need to then say, we want to append it to the value attribute, right? So we want to say, take all the stuff you currently have and then add these new things. So what we need to do now is we, instead of looking at the tag by name, we need to go into the attribute of the tag directly. And the attribute that we want to edit is going to be its value. And then this is where we can append our items here. So now we're going to have uh, resource uh, workstation parts or resource workbench parts, resource forge parts, resource cement mixer, and resource chemistry station. So yeah, it looks a little bit messy, but what this is going to do now is it's going to uh, it's going to add this bit of text to the to the inside of the attribute. So the attribute up here that it's going to add it to is going to be this one. So the allowed upgrade items here, it's going to add, it's going to take what's already in there 
and then it's also going to add my comma separated list of values to it as well using an append so append can be used in that way to add things into attributes as well you can do that with guns if you're specifying like more ammo it can use so say if like a, you make a special type of nine more round that the pistol can use you can add an appendix path just make sure you put a comma in front like that first as well because otherwise it will uh, it will throw errors and uh, it will not like you very much but yeah that's the append one and that should put it into the stone axe so there we go so we got the action one let's make sure it's correct so it's going to be let's go into items and just double check that we've got it right so we're going to go melee tool stone axe okay so yep it's called melee tool stone axe we need the property class of action one yep and then it's going to go into allowed upgrade items so then it's going to take all these and then slap my list of stuff onto the end of it which is awesome so now the stone axe can upgrade the items now i need to do that to I need to do it to the Tarza stone axe, I need to do it to the claw hammer, and I need to do it to the nail gun. Okay, so stone axe Tarza's is the next one. So let's go ahead and grab this one. Okay, so I need that one next. So what I need to do now is pretty much copy this, and then paste this for the Tarza stone axe, the hammer, and the nail gun. So then all we need to do is change the name. So then we want it to do the Tarza stone axe, and uh, then we want melee tool claw hammer and then we want uh, gun tool nail gun i believe it's the last one let's just double check that in items so let's add it to all four so stone axe uh, then you got claw hammer and then you've got gun tool nail gun there we go now this might seem a bit long-winded because you can see i'm specifying the exact same thing four times right i've got Items, item name is this, da, da, da. items, item name is this. I, da, 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 da. There's actually a shortcut that we can do for that. So what we can do is instead of just specifying one name like this, we can use an or statement to go through a list of names. So what we could do is we could say, what if we want the name to be this or this or this or this before we move on to the property? We can actually do that. We can go ahead and say, instead of doing it like that, we can say whose name is Mayotel Stone Axe or whose name equals uh, melee tool stone axe tarsus and we can just do that so we can go or name equals oh don't uh, close the thingy though let's see name is so that okay hang on a sec let me close this fine window so or name equals uh, melee tool claw hammer or whose name equals gun tool nail gun there we go so that can then go ahead and go through all the possible repair items with an or statement and then it'll apply it to all of those ones that match it so then instead of having to do all these three we've pretty much cut a whole load of code and this will do exactly the same job as those huge lines of code did from there which is awesome and Fancy says, um, it started to grow into the part where I don't understand anything, but I'm still entertained. Well, that's good, Fancy. I'm glad you're still entertained. Um, let's see. So, Edson says, so, you're not that. so the fun fun times have officially gained back. Oh, the fun pimps have gained back the rights. So, console updates will come soon. Haha. -ha. So, that's fine. And we can also, um, we can actually um, do like some entering in this xpath here so we can do this just to kind of make the xpath more readable when we're doing it so we can do this or name is that um or name is that so yeah we can do that to make the xpath a little bit more readable there um because currently it's not very readable but now we can see we have a whole list of stuff which should work so now we've appended the items that we've added into the game onto the available list of items that the repair tools can use which is awesome so now let's go ahead and check it works Hopefully it does. If I've not uh, completely messed everything up, it should work just fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that, and let's see. Okay, it says, damn it, autocorrect. <laughs> so yeah, using or statements within uh, XPath selector is a really powerful way to pretty much cut down the entire workload um, that you do. It's very, very handy. So let's go ahead and look in here. And, ooh, what have we got? So, items, XML, mod, Fennec mod, failed. What have we got here? Uh, let's see. This is an unclosed string. XPath exception. 
X path exception. Okay, hang on a second. We have an X path exception. So we finally got a bit of red text. I think that's the, the first bit of red text that we saw. So let's go ahead and pause the game real quick. And the way we can do this now is, let's see. X path exception is an unclosed string. Okay, let's just make sure I've got this um, set up. So that's fine. So it was an items.xml. See, this is how we can uh, check our debugs here. So let's go into here. So what is it saying is wrong? It's saying in items.xml from mod, fa mod failed. So it's definitely in this in this area. Now we just have to see where it is. So why don't we go ahead and copy. It probably is this last X path here. Property class equals action one. Property name is lab upgrade items. Ah, there it is. I forgot a quote on the end right there. So let's go ahead and put the quote in there. There you go, so the first bit of red text we saw, which is awesome, so that's how we can debug our code. Let's go ahead and come back out and go back in and see if we get any more red text. And I think that is, oh yeah, yep, red text. Red text is awesome. It is awesome sauce. So now we have to do is make sure that the stone axe and all the tools can upgrade the stuff. We only need to test that on one though, so that should be fine. So now let's see um, if we put down a workstation here and give ourselves some workstation parts. So let's go CM, creative, and salvaged, salvaged workstation parts. Let's give ourselves a few of these. Let's just go and make sure that the wrench, the stone axe, and everything can upgrade it. So stone axe, this will make sure my name is correct, the Tars is one, and the nail gun. There we go. Okay, so put all these things up there. Let's get all these tools down here. So can the stone axe upgrade this? Yes, it can. The stone axe can upgrade this. Awesome. Can this upgrade it? Yes, it can. Excellent. The nail gun? Yep, the nail gun can upgrade it. There you go. And, oh look, there you go. I upgrade it into a fully working bench. Very nice. Um, and can the wrench upgrade it? Oh, no, wait, the wrench isn't uh, a tool that we use, is it? Yeah, it's the claw hammer, not the wrench. I forget, the wrench is no longer a repair tool. Which is really weird, <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, okay, so let's go and repair it up. And yep, we can upgrade it. So now all the workstations can now be upgraded into their working counterparts. And then, if you remove it, you can use the removal kit to take it out of the world. I call that a pretty successful model. Look at that. I'm at all he's giving me the time. Yes, the time the time is getting on. I am I am aware. It's 31, so I've got a tiny little bit of time left to just tie this all up. Uh, it's, all, it's always one little thing, so that's an entire... Yep, uh, one typo can ruin everything. All the typos we've made. Yes, I'm sure. How you doing, Jana? Welcome to the stream. Thanks so much for popping along. All right, so the last thing we're going to do is clear up something that has been bothering me a little bit with the items, and that is the resources currently only have a stack number of five, right? We want to make this a little bit more lenient. So we're going to upgrade that to a stack number of 50. There you go. So now we've pretty much made a complete modelet. Look at that. So now we have a complete modelet that we can go ahead and distribute to anyone who would like it. So let's go ahead now and see about uh, getting this published so you guys can download it if you would like it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is not go into the YouTube side of things right there. I want to go to my folder structure here real quick just to, just so I can show you guys so the modelet is now made the last thing I'm going to do is change the name of uh, my file to make a modelet and I'm going to change it to fennec modelet world workstation removal there you go and now we have workstation removal working in game so just like that we made a nice little uh, nice little modeler i don't need the item icon out of this or the ui less i don't need that and that's empty so we can remove this folder that is not required at all and then i can go ahead and create a repo and make this downloadable where do i find the foods model that you made i want to take a look at how you manage things because i'm stuck i'm much surprised um the a17 foods model is on the forums um the a18 one i'm still working on right now um but that will be available soon now is there anything i don't need so we got blocks items localization loop so all this is now ready to go and you guys should be able to download this so let's go ahead and make this into a github repo so let's go to Let's go to my GitHub desktop. 
right here. This is what I used to um, get the Fennec Monoliths online for you. So we're going to make a new repository here. And we're going to go and call this one uh, Seven Days to Die. Fennec Modlets A18. There you go. And we can ignore that. Don't need to initialize it with anything. Uh, Mods Fennec Mod. Okay, create repository. There you go. So then we are going to take this right here, this completed mod, and we are going to chuck, chuck that into the repo area. So let's come out of here. Go into my documents where my mods folder is. This is my uh, Fennec mod. Then it's created one for A18, and I will chuck the model right in there. And then we can push this up to GitHub, and then you guys can download it. Huzzah! Um, so let's go ahead and do this. We can do Fennec mods 18, and we can say, yeah, that's what I want. So first of all, we're going to publish the repository, and we're going to make the code public. So all of you guys can see it. And that's going to commit and push, commit and push, and then we can go ahead and push up these changes. So this is the initial commit, and that's added workstation removal modlet, and commit that to master. And then I'll get the download link for you guys in just a sec. We're going to push this up to the origin. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to give this video so many plays. Watch it says it's in Jagger. Well, thank you so much, dude. So we're going to upload that guy. And let's go and fetch Origin to bring it back down. And then we can go ahead and go to GitHub. And then I can give you guys a download link for it. So if you want to download this mod, we can go to GitHub slash MDF25. And to my repositories right here. Uh, 70 today, Fennec Model is A18. And we want to copy this link. So download the zip. Uh, copy link address and if you guys would like to download this modlet you can now find it right there Aha. so if you'd like to download it there is a download link so you can go ahead and download it for yourselves as well um, I will do a little tutorial on like how to set up a github and everything as well because that's probably something that some modders will want to know to make their mods available to the world but now if you want to go ahead and get that you can so there you go so that mod is now completely available for all you guys to download once I've done the foods mod as well I will add that into there as well so that will appear so when you download your mods from github let me sh let me show you how to download and install it so when you download it you're gonna you're gonna click the link and it should start the download as a zip file here. What you want to do, go to your downloads, right click on it, and we want to, uh, we're going to copy it. So we can right click on here, copy this guy. Um, oh no, we want to go inside it first, then right click, and then we're going to copy. You don't want to take the A18 master directly, so you copy this one, and then in your seven days to die folder, so you're going to go desktop. Um, for, well, for me, it's I've got a shortcut on my desktop. But I, sh I showed you guys how to access it through Steam. Make a mods folder and literally just go ahead and paste it in there. And of course, mine's already in there, so I'll just replace the files. Won't do anything for me. And there we go. My modlets is now in there as well. So there's my food one. There's my uh, workstations as well. And you guys can then go ahead and add that modlet straight into your collection. Um, and actually, says not many videos on this type of stuff. Well, that's that's why I'm kind of aiming to uh, aiming to go ahead and change, because you know modding is fun. And I think it's a really good idea that more people can learn it and create awesome stuff. So there you go, guys. We have successfully made a really simple, really cool modlet. And hopefully you guys have picked up a load of uh, tips and tricks along the way um, and how to use some of the X paths and XMLs um, to create the kind of stuff that you would like. So hopefully you guys have got a lot from this. If you guys want to see other things, of course, let me know. And we can go ahead and do some more tutorials if you would like to see that. But that was that concludes like my little mini series on making a modlet. Um, so if you guys would like to do see more things, I'm sure we can. It says uh, thanks. Don't have to make those one less things. And thanks again, Max. You're a game changer for real. We'll keep up the great work. Thank you so much, AC. And Arvan says, well done, Max. You have been my seven-day site inspiration. I've been following since A15 building uh, integrity. Oh, nice, dude. Uh, made my in-game. Made my in-game life so much easier. Well, I'm glad to hear that, dude. Yeah, the uh, structure integrity definitely needed um, some some explaining. And uh, Cold Sparky says, "Very interesting. Thank you for this video. No worries, dude. And welcome to uh, welcome to the stream. And uh, unfortunately, we're gonna have to end off right now as well. So thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. And I will see you guys in the next one. So until then.